Hola amigos, que tal? What's going on, y'all? You are now tuned into the Bobby Keith Podcast with your host, of course, it's me, Bobby Keith. This is episode 88, another multiple of 11, 8 with the infinite abundance vibration we on right now, you know what I'm saying? We're taking 11, we're doing it 8 times over, you feel me? We're taking 22, doing it 4 times over, we're taking 44, doing it 2 times over, but... This one ain't about numerology, you feel me? Humans, aliens, others, sending y'all peace, love, and positivity. I, of course, as the title of this episode exclaims, just got back from a beautiful trip down in Mexico to the Yucatan Peninsula, you know what I'm saying? And it was magical. It was truly an incredible trip, a learning experience. So much happened. And I think that's these are my favorite podcasts to do, talking about a trip because or an experience. They're just, I think they're my favorite things to do on earth, you know what I mean? Explore, understand different cultures, be a part of different regions of this earth. Live in a world that's unfamiliar and uncomfortable for a period of time. It's incredible. It's only related to growth, at least in my mindset. So, hey, let's talk about it. (laughs) This all begins, this all begins, well, a very long time ago, I suppose. You know, I've spoke on this before. Uh, My mother, rest her soul, you know what I'm saying? Out out here with us all, looking over us, you feel me? Rest in peace. She just left, uh, she left our little earth. July 4th of uh, last year. But one of the things she did, she didn't travel a lot, but she did go to the Yucatan Peninsula. She did that. She went to Cancun. She did her thing. You know what I'm saying? Might have been one of her only international trips. I think she did it twice. Uh, But besides the point, she went to the Mayan ruins, you know, Chichen Itza. And when she was there, she said she felt the energies of being there before and helped create this city so this has always been a dream goal destination place for me to travel visit experience all these words of the like you know what i mean not necessarily to recreate this although certainly that would have been awesome to experience but more to just you know i want to see what she saw you know what i mean so It's always been high on the list, and not to mention Chichen Itza is one of the seven wonders of the modern world. That's rare air, you know what I mean? Let me see if I can name them all off top. We have Chichen Itza, we have Machu Picchu, we have... Those are the only two in the Americas? I might be missing one. But anyway, let's take it over, uh, let's cross some continents, you know what I'm saying? We got the Colosseum of Rome. I've been there. I've been to that one. Breathtaking. Incredible. We can go over to Petra in Jordan. There's four. Taj Mahal, India. That's five. Great Wall of China. You know what I'm saying? That's six. And which one am I missing? I'm missing an important one, no? They're all important, obviously. Hmm... The pyramids are considered a part of the, the the Egyptian pyramids are considered a part of the ancient world wonders. Seven modern world wonders. Which one am I missing? Oh, I think it's Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure that's the list. That's the seven. But these are uh, kind of landmark destinations for travelers to see and experience. And as you all know, this is. One of my favorite things, as I just exclaimed, is traveling, experiencing, going to new places. This is probably my main goal in life is to see as much of this world as I can, apart from being a father, being a good husband. You know what I'm saying? Those are important things to me. Being a good human. You know what I mean? But we're here on this earth. It's bountiful. It's lush. It's vast. It's expansive in ways, at least to your own mind. It may not be growing. The earth may not be growing per se, but one thing it is doing 
is when we experience a new place, the earth grows for us, if that makes sense to you. So, of course, this was on the short list. Gotta go to Chichen Itza. You know, it's a, a day trip from Cancun. Of course, from Cancun, you drive an hour and a half and you're in Tulum. That's been a dream destination for a lot of folks. It became a travel hot spot. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure if you're, you know, in your 20s, somewhat tuned in to social media culture, you know about Tulum. Younger, even probably in your 30s, maybe too. It's become one of those spots. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it kind of is the spot. And it gained a lot of popularity and fame, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Mainly because Mexico, Mexico, you know what I'm saying? They had the border open the whole time. So you wanted to come? That seemed to be the spot. And it's, you know, it's got vibes. Uh, It's new. It's developing. You know, one thing I learned on this trip was the whole uh, Mayan Riviera, Riviera de Maya, just kind of this, the southern coastline of the Yucatan Peninsula, if you, you know, stretch it from Cancun down to Tulum and everything in between. You got like Playa del Carmen, you got Cozumel, Cozumel, I'm not sure I didn't go there, didn't really research it, but uh, Isla Mujeres, you know what I'm saying? The island Mujeres, pronouncing that incorrectly probably, but this whole area is brand new, essentially. As far as being overly developed, uh, Cancun was what, like 50 years old? For real, believe it or not. Playa del Carmen, same. Tulum's like 15, 20 years old as far as this new infrastructure for tourism. It was a little sleepy town as far as I'm aware. And we'll get into the beautiful ancient existence that happened within Tulum. We'll get to that in a little bit because I did... Not only uh, tour and visit Chichen Itza, I also had the beautiful pleasure and experience to tour and visit the Tulum ruins, which are just as mind-blowing, although a fraction of the size of the ancient city of Chichen Itza. It's it's beautiful. Um, But yeah, it's always been a dream destination of mine as far as somewhere to go. And the fact is, it's close. You know what I mean? It's actually close. That would make it the closest wonder of the world. I live up in New England. You know what I'm saying? I'm near Boston in New Hampshire. So it's really not far. And for some reason, you know, all my travelers have noticed lately, especially lately, that's one of the cheapest tickets you can buy. So there's really no excuse <laughs> if you're a traveler and you haven't seen this wonder of the world and you have interest in seeing it you know a a flight to Cancun is about as cheap as any flight in the world right now if you're living in the states at least in the northeast if you're looking at Boston New York major cities like that they paying you to go (laughs) not really paying you to go to Cancun but the flights to Cancun are affordable mainly because what's expected at least in my mind is you gonna book a a resort and that's where that real money is because you know I looked for like two seconds at a, a, a you know I'm a, a Hilton's Honor member <laughs> weird flex <laughs> but in that app you could you know go to the hotels and see uh, how much they cost wherever you want to go so I checked out to Loom just to do it and they have a resort thing there and it's extremely expensive I'm talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars a night like I'm like huh that's weird <laughs> Because the Airbnbs I'm looking at, I'm in that 30 to 80 range, you know what I'm saying? And they are looking just as good as that, but they don't include food and beach access. So whatever, I'll figure that out. I'll make the difference up. But I'm that type of traveler, you know what I mean? I'm sure one day a resort would be incredible. We kind of did that in Greece. You know, my wife and I, we went to Greece for our honeymoon. We spent three days at a, 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 a all-vegan hotel type vibe like kind of resorty vibe but really just like a hotel uh but it was really nice i think it's technically like a four-star place you know what i'm saying it was really expensive the most expensive room we ever 
did ever. It's probably like 300 bucks a night or something like that. Um, and that's still cheaper than what's happening <laughs> on the Mayan Riviera. You feel me? Uh, and first of all, shout out to the Mayan people. I learned so much on this trip and we'll get to that in a minute, but that culture is not dead. The people are not gone. That was just in the history. You know, I don't like that word, but that's what I, uh, I prefer human existence because history is a very loaded word. His story is it's tricky right so i like human existence because that's something that we can all understand um but in school they call it history so i don't know when i was in school at least we taught we were taught about the mayans for a little bit we, it was kind of understood that they they were wiped out it was over it was a violent uh sacrificial species is kind of how we were taught at least in my my brief brief memory of the uh matter it was Oh, yeah, we, they do hum, human sacrifices and they're gone, uh, you know, when when the white people came in, uh, murdered and uh, all that stuff, they kind of vanished. But no, that's not true. Over five million Mayan people still living today. But we'll get to that when we get to that beautiful culture. So. Yeah, I think the flight is cheap because <laughs> most of the people flying in are going to be spending that bread on the resorts putting that money right back into the community so uh or into the pockets of big business is more accurate way of saying that because i think what i do is putting money into the community you know going local (laughs) and never once eating at a huge uh resort or even stepping foot on one but i'm not trying to cast no judgment that's just how i like to travel and i said one day maybe we will be resort people as far as my wife and i but for now it's airbnb in the town so Let's let's uh let's take it back to this decision. I've been hinting at it slightly for a couple weeks. You know what I'm saying? If you really listen to the podcast, on Earth Day I had a bit of a premonition. You know, during meditation, we got to see more of the Earth. It's my higher self and myself. You know, communicating. Got to see more of the Earth. What we doing? You know, we're interconnected to everything on this beautiful planet. Let's go connect with everything. So that happens during meditation, right? And it's like, okay, but it's meditation. I let that thought fly by, understand it, and let it go. Later that night, I couldn't sleep. It was like my body would not allow itself to turn off until I figured out I'm going to do some type of trip. (laughs) So basically, I pulled out. Trusty Google Google Flights, Trusty Sky Scanner. These are the two kind of services I use to see where you can fly for uh, affordable price. You know what I'm saying? Basically, what it came down to is. Oh, and of course, I consulted with my wife. You know what I mean? I'm not just going to. And we've talked about it before. She wouldn't. She didn't care, actually. Uh, and allows me to go have a trip like this. And there's no issues. You know what I mean? And that's beautiful. I, I urge y'all to seek out relationships like this because it's you can't beat it. I'm like, yo, I want to I, I wanna go on a little trip by myself because I know you can't make it. Obviously, I asked, you want to come? Can we make it work with the dates? And, you know, she couldn't get the time off for work. So she's like, you go. What are we? What? <laughs> so I'm like, all right, say less. Shit. So uh, I was like, I got to do this soon. So I started looking at looking at flights. Where are we going? What made the most sense for, you know, COVID restrictions, amount of time I wanted to travel, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It turned out to be the front runners were Colombia, Cancun, Guatemala, specifically uh, Cancun in Mexico. You know what I'm saying? Because that was the cheapest flight. (laughs) Guatemala City was a cheap flight as well and most of the cities in Colombia were cheap flights as well um strangely I don't know why I don't know what airline deal is going on there why uh Colombia is cheap to fly into as well but um so I you know I started going through everything I could do on a short trip started reading all these reviews and stories and it became clear that I could make an incredible trip flying into Cancun not staying anywhere near Cancun, you know, driving to Tulum, 
driving to Chichen Itza, but it all hinged on myself being able to rent a car. <laughs> so I, you know, I took the the necessary steps. I got a credit card. We talked about that on a previous episode. Go check that out if you want more stories or more details on the matter. If you're a young person, you need a credit card. We we talk about it more. I'm not really trying to give you financial advice. I'm just sharing my process. So I get the credit card. I'm like, okay. So I can rent a car. Worst case scenario, even if I couldn't get a credit card, there's very good bus systems. From the Cancun airport, you can get a bus to Tulum. You can get a local bus to Playa del Carmen. Even if you miss the bus to Tulum, you can still get a bus to Playa and you get a bus from Playa to... There's very good infrastructure with that. Taxis, obviously. And obviously, there's group tours that will take you to Chichen Itza and all this stuff. So even if I wasn't able to secure a card, I think I still would have went. But it's pretty pretty affordable as far as I was looking that it might end up being a, somehow a little, a little more affordable to just do it yourself and rent a car. I think the buses would obviously be a little cheaper public buses. But uh, one thing I didn't look up was public bus from Tulum to Chichen Itza. I'm sure you can make it happen somehow, but anyway, that's beyond the point. So I booked the flight to Cancun. <laughs> I did it on Tuesday. Uh, I did it for a Tuesday to a Friday. In retrospect, I should have done Monday to Friday, but um, you know I hold Monday sacred to do the pod. But I ended up doing last week's pod on a Sunday anyway, <laughs> so it didn't really matter. Um, maybe so. Maybe next next little trip I go on, it might be Monday to Friday. <laughs> But it works perfect, you know, because my wife works Monday to Friday. Very busy, very busy, uh, incredible woman, incredible, supportive woman. I love her so much. Um, so, I mean, next time I might do Monday to Friday. But anyway, I book a, I booked the plane ticket first because that's what you got to do. Tuesday to Friday, you know, following my instincts. Earth told me. Gaia told me. All the spirit in the world told me. Yo, just book the trip. What are you doing? You love travel. You talk travel all the time. It's the most you gain from experience is always is travel. Go book a trip. What are you doing? Go somewhere new. Feel it out. So, beautiful. Book the trip. Into Cancun Tuesday afternoon. Out of Cancun Friday afternoon. So, you get like about four days. You know what I mean? But it's really three. Um, You know, because it's like half a day Tuesday, half a day Friday, full Wednesday, full Thursday. Um. And I know that's not a lot of time, but it's also showing you how accessible this can be. This is a long weekend. You know what I'm saying? If you fly in on a, you know, Thursday night or uh, you can fly out on Sunday or Monday or Friday night, Monday too. You know what I'm saying? Like this is within reach for you, even if you have, you know, full job and all that. You can make it happen. And everybody's remote working now. Obviously, if you're like my wife and you, you're you treating patients, that's a little different. But I know a lot of y'all are in tech, yo. Like, you could <laughs> fly in on Thursday night after you finish your work, remote, remote work on Friday. You know what I'm saying? Do the whole weekend something crazy. Take PTO on Monday. Remote work Tuesday if you want or fly back to, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could do a whole trip and really only take like one day off, or two days off. It's it's real. It's possible. I'm trying to show you. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, book the trip. Next thing is uh, lodging, car. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's how it goes. It's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Those are the, the bases you have to cover. You got to have a place to sleep and transportation. How are you going to get around? I didn't want to stay in Cancun, so how am I going to get to Tulum? I made the decision I want to go to Tulum. It's the spot, you know what I mean? You, ha- I have to at least experience it once. Like, it's one of those spots. That's one of those. Y- you gotta see it. Like, this is this is this is it. This is the the on trend. You know what I'm saying? This is the current vibe. You gotta at least see it. So fuck it. I'm gonna stay in Tulum. Let's see what they got. You know what I'm saying? Airbnb going crazy. They got incredible spots. Now, one thing about Tulum, I didn't know until I really. Started getting into the Airbnb side of things. Because, you know, I saw my flights landing at Cancun. So I did, like, 
Google Maps, Cancun to Tulum, Cancun Airport to Tulum. What are we talking? Like hour and a half drive. I'm like, all right, bet. That's like the real research I did on Tulum when I booked the flight. Then when I start getting into the Airbnb side of things, it's like, you start reading. It's like, oh, this is a jungle town. <laughs> this town just is building and developing right now, and it's in the middle of the jungle. So it's a lot of like eco cabanas and that type stuff. Um, you know, a lot of construction. That's what I'm reading all these Airbnb reviews. It's like, well, the the neighbor the next door property was always in construction, but it's okay. You know what I'm saying? The it, blah 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 blah. I'm like, okay. Then I start watching the YouTube videos on Tulum. Mind you, I already booked the trip. I might have seen one or two like travel vlogs for Tulum, and that's my favorite YouTube like travel vlogs. That's it, because then you get like. You know, is it worth it? Or what's the honest review? And I said, I watched a couple um, after I already booked the flight. And I started learning, like, okay, you can either stay on the beach in Tulum or you could stay in the town of Tulum. So it's a difference. I didn't know, obviously. Uh, I'm sure it'll all, in the next 20 years or so, it'll all just get developed into one big place. But for now, there's like the beach, there's jungle like a 15 minute drive and then in the town but it's all technically Tulum but there's a jungle literally between the beach and uh like the regular town I'm unsure what the population of Tulum is I'm gonna look that up right now because it is important let's see Tulum population it is 46,000 people so that's a town that's smaller than where I live today Nashua, New Hampshire, which is technically a city by New Hampshire standards, uh, but it's like 70,000 people, 70, 80, something like that. So it's a, a smaller <laughs> population than where I currently live. So it's a town, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm learning. I'm doing my Airbnb research. It's like, oh, you're going to be somewhere. It's It's actually currently developing. You know what I mean? Like, it's being built right now. <laughs> like the Tulum you're at today is going to be nothing like the Tulum 20 years from now. And not in like the New York City sense, how everything changed in the last 20 years, but like in the like Vegas, you know what I mean? Like Vegas, like that town came out of nowhere and now it exists. Like it was a desert and now it's a mega city in the middle of the desert. Tulum was just jungle, small population. I wonder if it has population. Ooh, I just threw my phone. I guess we don't need to know. I wonder if it has population number in like the 80s. I wonder what the population was. Beyond the point, after doing my research, I found out I wanted to stay in the town. You know what I mean? Because apparently on the beach, it's only resorts. There's some Airbnbs on the beach, but the price goes up. You know what I'm saying? Like the cheapest one, if you want to stay by the beach, is like $70, $80 a night. Um, which is ended up, I ended up paying eight seventy a night for my room, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, while the town averaged around like, you know, 30, 40 for a really good room, uh, you know, 20 for, um, less amenities or shared bathroom and that type of stuff. But for a whole place, you're looking around 30 something dollars a night, which is, that's great. <laughs> you know, that's great. I always compare it because Tal and I go down to visit her family in Long Island, um, you know, a couple times a season usually, and the hotel room <laughs> on Long Island is usually like 150 to 200 a night. So it's like, damn, if we go on to visit family, it is that. And Tulum is like a, a fifth of the price. You know what I'm saying? So I usually compare it that way. So if you spent, if you ready, ready to spend 200 a night somewhere, you can afford <laughs> five nights in Tulum. Anyway, so I'm looking at, I want to stay in the town. I'll go happy cow, obviously. Uh, I am a vegan, for you who don't know, um, and Happy Cow is like this resource. It shows you all the vegan restaurants or uh, vegetarian restaurants or regular restaurants that serve vegan options, and there's reviews from the community, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, oh, wait staff clearly understands what vegan means, or I was brought a steak dinner when I asked for a vegan. You know what I mean? It's a good resource. So I checked, boom, 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 boom. You know what I'm saying? Vegan restaurants all over. Tons of options. And most of them are in the town. There's, of course, a few on the beach. So I'm like, I want to stay in the town. Give me the local experience. You know what I mean? So 
uh, you know, I go through the narrow down process. I got like four or five I really want to check out. Uh, one gets booked. Uh, I'm a, I'm like a week away at this point, mind you. Like, I think I booked for like five days before <laughs> I took off. So the good thing about that is some rates dropped, and I think I got my place for a steal. But I got this incredible. Uh, I found this place like. Yeah, people were saying it's like a, a five, 10 minute drive to the downtown strip, which is kind of where everything is. Some of these Airbnbs are like, you know, like a 20 minute drive to downtown. Because again, this place is currently developing in the jungle. <laughs> so the ver- the a good majority of the roads are, you know, dirt or potholed up or, you know, just really being made at this current moment. Like that's something I really don't, think people understand like Tulum is brand new (laughs) like everything about it you know what I mean it's like brand new so anyway I found a place that people were saying is like uh it's not that far out of town it's like five ten minutes you're on the outskirt of town you're not like really out there in the jungle uh which I would have nothing against obviously but I did want to be close enough to town where if I was hungry I could get food within 10 minutes, you know what I mean? Uh, So boom, I found a good place. It was like 70 a night, but the only reason I spent 70 is because this place was phenomenal, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, when y'all see the, uh, I made a, uh, well, that's a whole nother story. I (laughs) uh, I I made like a tour video, but that's not on TikTok. It will be, I'll put it up on TikTok and Instagram and all that, but. The place is phenomenal, so like, cool. Let me do that 70. I'm fine with that. Uh, Three nights, boom, incredible. That's like one night in New York. (laughs) So like, all right, let's do it. And then I booked the rental car. So I read a bunch of reviews of all these different rental car agencies. uh, And I went with, you know, Enterprise, good old Enterprise. You know what I'm saying? Because apparently if, uh, as long as you get, all the insurance, which I was going to do regardless, because, I mean, what are, what are we talking? We're, we're somewhere new. Do you really want to be hassling with people on anything for an extra, like, I think $30 a day is the difference between, like, full coverage insurance and all this. So I was like, all right, as long as you get the full coverage insurance with Enterprise, they're only going to place a, they're either going to not place a hold on your card or place a $200 hold on your card. So, like, that's cool. <laughs> Because the card I got was 1500 And I saw that if you didn't get the insurance, they're going to place a 2000 USD hold on your card. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't even afford that hold. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, let me go to Enterprise because I can do it all online. It seems to be cool. It seems to be chill. And so then I reserve it. I thought I paid for it, but it was a res- reservation. Um, When I got to the checkout, it's like, all right, you're reserved. I'm like, you don't need my card? And I guess that all happens at the at the thing so boom fast forward i have my my stuff in line you know what i mean you get all you need is your flight your airbnb and now your transportation so in my mind check 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 i saw that chichen itza you don't need to get tickets ahead of time you can just show up on the day get tickets at the window Uh, i was reading uh, they might charge you extra for a gopro i'm bringing my gopro so it's like uh it's easier to just get the ticket there because they're gonna hassle you about the so blase you know what i'm saying I had all my ducks in a row. And then we get to Sunday. Sunday night, I do the podcast. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't want to have to stress about it Monday. Monday, I'm packing all day. And Tuesday morning, we about to take off. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to get right back to y'all in a second. We're going to start the trip. And we are back. Before we get into the story or get back into the story, we do have a presenting sponsor. And of course, that is to travel Mexico. You know what I'm saying? Travel Mexico. It is incredible. Of course, this is mostly, well, only focused on the Yucatan Peninsula because that's where I was. This area is amazing. I spent a little bit of time in the state of Yucatan, uh, but most of the time in the state of Quintana Roo. Awesome places. Uh, I have a lot to say. We'll talk about it in a second, but travel there seriously experience it it's worth it and back to the story so 
everything's good. I get all my ends tied. I'm packed up. I packed up a, my normal travel backpack, which is a hiking backpack. It's an Osprey 44 liter. It worked for two weeks in Thailand. So why wouldn't it work for uh, four days in Mexico? So be- beautiful. Uh, filled it up. Not even full. You know what I mean? Extra room. Beautiful. Carry on. I suggest going with a hiking backpack. It's the best thing you could possibly travel with for, I don't know, any any traveler that is wondering, do I bring a carry-on? Do I bring, do a hiking backpack? Because you can use it hiking and you can use it traveling. So you get the most, it's a multi-use item. Anyway, I'm ready to go. Tuesday morning, Tall takes me to the airport. I got an early flight. We get to the airport at like 6 a.m., say bye, get through. Uh, well, I did mobile check-in or online check-in because that's like one of the best things ever you don't have to go to the check-in counter or anything you could do it all on your phone so good boarding pass on apple wallet how good is that it's such a good invention um but yeah the only thing i had to do was have my passport scanned at the desk it was actually the first time that it was like uh passengers uh johnson uh morales uh keith uh we need to see you at the desk. You know, for the first time, I had my name on the speaker. So, that was, you know, that was fun, a new experience. Um, they just had to scan my passport because I did mobile check-in. Um, and it was all good, obviously. And then get on the plane. I had a connecting flight in Charlotte. Easy. Um, get on the plane. Charlotte to Cancun. Incredible. I had good seat partners. I, I Since I booked, you know, I was trying to book as cheap as possible. They just throw you wherever they throw you as far as seats. So I was in the middle for both flights. But I had good row partners on the flights, so there's no worries. On the flight from Charlotte to Cancun, there's actually someone who had done it before. Um, and apparently she was going for work. So it was just, it was nice. Obviously not like conversations, but just like good vibe. You know what I mean? So it actually came in handy because when we landed in Cancun, um, we had to do these customs forms and I had a question about one of the qu- things and she was in line like 10 people in front of me and I'm just like, you know, like a, a snake line. <laughs> so when we lined up, I was like, what did you do for this part? <laughs> so it was good to at least be friendly with the seat partner. You know what I'm saying? You don't got to know. I mean, actually, I advise against like starting a full conversation with people, strangers you're sharing the road with because they probably don't want to talk. But this person initiated the conversation when I sat down. So it ended up being mutually beneficial for both of us. So anyway, land in Cancun. Um, I still end up doing the form wrong because you needed to do it two times over. So I had to uh, just do that real quick and then got stamped in. It was so funny. It was just like, <laughs> looked at the sheet. She tore off the part for me to keep like, and just have this for your flight back. <laughs> I don't know. She asked, uh, vacation? I'm like, yes. And that was it. It's so funny because it is the complete opposite of the experience I had getting back into the U.S. We'll get there in a second. Um, So, boom. Get through customs. I don't have to get my baggage or anything because it's on my back. I read that the Enterprise desk is right after you get out of, uh, you know, customs. So, I'd already had it all scoped out. I'm like, beautiful. I go to the desk. They're like, "Uh, what's your name? I got a reservation. Blah. I'm like, uh show them my ID, whatever. They have my reservation. It's sick. Perfect. And then she asked, do you have your credit card? I'm like, yeah, I have it. I took it out. And she's like, you sure it's credit card? I'm like, yeah. Like, and then I showed her and she's like, oh yeah, great. That'll be, that'll be great. Um, so I'm like, oh hell yeah. I already have confirmation that everything's going to be good. Cause the lady at the counter at enterprise was like, oh, perfect. You're going to enjoy your trip, etc." Um, Another woman walked me over. Uh, so basically, the they have a desk at the airport, but the office is like a two, three minute shuttle ride away. So one of the women working the desk walked me, you know, through the airport outside to wait for the van to pick a, well, pick me up, but then us up. There's another person eventually joined us. But then you get your first taste of that heat. You know what I'm saying? That first taste of that heat. But the funniest thing is on the walk, the second you open the door. Uh, you know, from the airport to like the waiting area for like cars and buses and taxis. You know what I mean? Typical airport stuff. If you've ever been to an airport, <laughs> right on your right, there's a 
<laughs> an air margaritaville and i'm like oh this is the most touristic place i ever flew into huh because like <laughs> there's a while you're waiting for your bus get a margarita you know what i'm saying with jimmy buffett you feel me <laughs> you going to cancun you going to the resort what, what's let's start now you know it's it was just fun to see um so i never <laughs> i don't think i'd ever flown into something that touristic before but of course i was driving out to tulum and on the commercial break i did some research the population of Tulum, as early as 2000, was under 5,000 inhabitants. In 2014, we're talking 20. So in less than 10 years, we've gotten that doubled, at twice over, almost twice over, to around 47,000. In 20 years, it went from 5,000 to 40 something. So just really trying to explain to y'all that this place is brand new, and there's a lot that comes with that. So we'll get to that in a second. So I was like, okay, this is going to be touristy right here, but I know I'm driving to Tulum. It's going to be a little different vibe, more more traveler, more, uh, you know, hippie stuff. That's at least the vibe I got from, you know, reading about it online. It's like a backpacker place. You know what I mean? Cool, cool, cool. So waiting for the bus, I get that taste of the heat. You know, I'm wearing my uh, I'm wearing my Roy G. Biv rain jacket. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously didn't want to bring a jacket or anything, but it was cold in Boston that morning, so <laughs> I needed a little jacket. Uh, had to take that off because I was sweating. You know what I mean? We went from it was probably 50 degrees that morning in uh in Boston, and then I landed to you know 90 with that humidity, and I love it. Trust me, but I had my jacket on, so I was sweating. <laughs> Uh, I got that ready. And then another woman uh, got escorted over to who's also had a rent uh, enterprise rental. And, uh, you know, she seemed she was an older woman. Uh, I will young at spirit. You know what I'm saying? But um, she was definitely probably in her 50s, maybe. Um, but 40s, 50s, 60s, something like that. I can never tell. So why not? Why even put a number on it? <laughs> uh, it's because it's so funny, because when I say someone's old, Tall's like, oh, they're young. Because Tall deals with people who are, like, in their 80s every day at work. Uh, so I'm like, this woman was probably, like, 49 or 49 to, like, 62. <laughs> that, obviously, that's young. But anyway, she was by herself as well, getting a car. Uh, so then the van comes. And on the, the van ride, we start talking. She's, she's super spiritual, super hippie. She's got, like, 11-11 tattooed on her arm and all that. Um, and it's like, what brings you? I'm like, I got to go to Chichen Itza. And she's like, oh, I got to do it, too. The, the energy is calling. Then I told the whole Earth Day story. And she's like, it just makes so, so much sense. Your energy is so good. All those, you know, the talking points. That if you're in the hippie spiritual world, you know you know what's being said. You know what I'm saying? That is that is what it is. And uh, it's like, oh, hell yeah. Another another uh, couple got in the, in the van, too. Uh, and they're from Miami, so they spoke fluent Spanish. Uh, I'd say the woman had, like, zero. She was from Nevada. Uh, I had, like... 5% poquito, you know what I'm saying? And then the other couple got in at 100%. It was fun. It was just funny to see the varying levels of Spanish because obviously the, the guy driving the van speaks Spanish, but he also speaks English because, like I said earlier, this whole area of the country is fully tourist-facing. So everybody speaks English at least a little bit. Um, so anyway, get to the office. We all go in, get to uh, the counter, you know what I'm saying? Um, Oh, and by the way, the only time I had to wear a mask the whole entire trip was this Cancun airport experience. That's it. Like on the flights, no mask anymore. In the airports, no mask anymore, except Cancun, because that's like a city rule of Cancun that you need a mask because they don't they allow anybody to come. So I guess they have a mask rule for uh, the city of Cancun. Um, but that was it the whole time, which was nice, you know, like normal travel again, not having to wear a mask. Um and I am vaccinated and stuff like that. If I don't think I need to say anything or qualifiers like that. But for those of you who are all, ah, blah, blah, blah. you're not wearing a mask. Oh, yeah, I got my vaccinated. Like, we're good. We're good. Don't worry about it. Um, so, boom, we get to the enterprise desk. And this is where the trip, like, so I get to the, you know, I get to the, the, the desk. The, like, a general manager or something is, like, helping me. And I pull out, you know, my ID, my card. And everything changes at that moment. Like, oh, we can't take the Apple card. Like, wait, what? 
<laughs> yeah, we can't take the Apple card. Um, do you have another credit card? Like, wait, what? Why can't you take the? Why is that? What? So I'm at shock. I only have a de the only other thing I have is a debit card. You know what I'm saying? I have my Apple card and my debit card. I got the Apple card specifically to rent a car for this trip. It's the only reason I even had it. They can't take it. My heart drops all the way to my toes. I'm reverted to help me. <laughs> I'm by myself. My phone service isn't really working because I just landed. I have no one to call. Nobody will help. The people that I made acquaintance with on the bus, they're at their desk doing their thing and kind of ignoring what's happening over here. Not purposefully. I'm sure they had their own thing. But when I'm standing there for, you know, a solid 10 minutes and we're going through it, nobody was trying to help me. You know what I'm saying? It just left. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, my God. And the guy's like, I see you got full insurance. You did everything. We want to rent you a car. I see, but we just can't. So the issue is the Apple card doesn't have numbers on it. Now, the solve for that is on the Apple app, on the Apple card app or whatever in your wallet, it has a 16-digit code for you. Now, the interesting thing is that code does not line up with the code that your card has. And this is for, like, security reasons. Um, and even the guy at the counter, he has a similar card that has no numbers on it. And he's like, I do it too for security. I, I get it, but I can't even rent a car here. No fault of them. The only thing I would say is during the booking process, and it could have been in the fine print, <laughs> but like during the booking process, just say like, you need a credit card that has numbers printed on it. You know what I'm saying? Cause that wasn't anything of my knowledge i knew that you needed a credit card that was certainly the same but i didn't know you needed a credit card with numbers on it or should just say no apple card or something like that so i'm trying to get in touch with apple support they can't help me i'm trying to call my wife i can't get the call through because the service is just connecting to a new country um because she has a credit card obviously and i was wondering if they could do that we're husband and wife and she's like oh she's got to be here oh my gosh this couldn't be worse so I'm like, what do I do? Can I give you my debit card? Because in my mind, since they don't accept the Apple card, nobody accepts the Apple card. And then I'm like, oh, so somebody's going to place a hold on the debit. If I have to go with someone else. At this point, I didn't even let my mind get to the next step. I'm trying every possible thing I can to get a car from Enterprise. Because I'm in a new place, new language. I'm... Now I don't have a car. I have an Airbnb I paid for waiting for me over there. What do I do? How do I? I I'm stuck. <laughs> so we get through everything. Um, he even, they put a charge on the card to show me one peso, like five US cents. And I think that charge is still pending on my card, which is annoying. Hopefully that goes away or I'll have to call them and get it removed. But anyway, um, it plays a card to show the thing and basically... They need the full 16 digits of the physical card because they can't take the digital payment for some reason or the digital digits. It's it's a weird, weird, weird system um, that they can't just like, what? What are we talking about here? I can take out the cash right now. Like, what do you want? And they couldn't help me. So that was devastating. I was nearly brought to tears because I've never had such a... Uh, you know, a left hook thrown at me on a trip like this, you know, and, and I was by myself. So this is my first solo, super international trip. You know, uh, I've been to Canada by myself, but that's not really the same. Um, but you know what I mean? I'm by myself. I got nothing. My car just fell through. What do I do? I'm like, can you help me? Who should I rent with? And the guy is now in his business mode and won't even tell me a company that I should try to rent with. I'm like, what? Why can't you help me? Like, you are the person that's trying to help me. And now now that I need advice on, is there going to be another rental? He's like, I'm sure there'll be another one. But he couldn't tell me where to go, what to do, anything like that. And I was just a little sketched out because I did so much research on these rental car companies. And I had read a bunch of reviews about some of these other companies that like, you know, like... uh 
taking money without uh without your authorization etc etc like all these kind of horror stories you know what i mean like uh false claims of damage and all this and i was just like oh man what do i do and it, uh basically everybody online was saying um don't do like a debit card place because like that might go bad it blah and i'm like oh what are we doing shit so they get me in a van to take me back to the airport essentially i'm like and it's a worse van too the van that brought me to the desk was like it's just funny because the van that brought me to the airport was much worse the ac wasn't like it wasn't there windows were open. it's just it's much it's, it's so interesting right so then they dropped me off just at like the arrivals gate <laughs> just placed me right there and i'm like oh okay like bye <laughs> like okay i get out the car a woman in a yellow shirt flags me down. It's like, what do you need? <laughs> and I'm just like, uh, I need I, my run. They just didn't let me rent a car at Enterprise. I, I'm trying to, you know, I where at a rental car desk. Can you point me there? And she's like, oh, I have. It's like, what do you need? How long? I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, how long? I'm like, four day, uh, Friday. She said, Friday. It's like, viernes, uh, cuatro días. This is like, I actually have to start, you know, using my Spanish skills, which is fun. But at the same time, I'm in distress because my whole trip just kind of caved in on itself. And I had my guard up because, you know, just from someone who consumes a lot of travel content and stuff, even back in the Bourdain days, you would get off, uh, you know, he would, there's airport scams. You just know about that. That's the thing. So I'm thinking, trying to get extra money out of me, all this and is this even a legit thing? Like, what are we doing? And then she starts spitting, like, you know, Enterprise. Uh, she named all the big ones. Alamo National. Big company. Uh, Monopoly. We're local rental. Local Tulum people. Or, <laughs> my bad. Local uh, Cancun people. We'll rent you a car. And I just like, what do you need? I'm like, I just, the cheapest thing. <laughs> and she starts showing me the prices. I'm like, oh, it's... You know, that's a, a little more than I was going to pay at Enterprise with the full insurance and everything. And she's like, yeah, full insurance. And I showed her my receipt from the Enterprise uh, booking. And then she's like, oh, yeah, no problem. We can match that price. I'm like, huh. Maybe this is legit. Maybe I, I don't even have to find the. Now, half we're walking through the airport. Um, I asked, you know, where the ATM is and stuff because I need now I need pesos. Like, I'm, I don't even have a car. I need pesos to you know, uh, do anything, et cetera. L little did I know that everybody takes USD there, but that's at Cancun, not Tulum. Um, so anyway, I'm like, what do we do? I'm trying to lose her. You know what I mean? I'm walking fast. She's right there. And then at some, like once I, uh, we hit a certain point and I'm like, you know what? Let me give in to this. Yes, I will. Yeah, I'll do it. You'll, you'll match my price. I'll, I'll get uh, the whole, there, there'll be a hold on my card, but you'll give it back. Blah, blah, unlimited miles. She got a picture of the car sent on text. It's like, is this okay? It's like, ah, it's that bien, see? And everything was good, you know what I mean? So I take out some cash. Uh, I took out 5,000 pesos, which was more than enough, jeez, for uh, all my spending money. Because I wanted to put the, the car on my card. Um, and I wanted just spending cash period. So anyway, I get my cash and she's not like hovering as I'm getting the cash at the ATM. She's like 20 feet away. Just like, let me do my thing, which I, that's when I was kind of like, oh, you know, this isn't, this probably isn't a scam or anything. This, this could be legit. You know what I mean? But it's just a random person just standing outside flagging down tourists. Like, what do you need? Do you need a taxi? Do you need a rental? Do it? Actually trying to help. I'm sure she got cut in a little bit of the money, but hey, I'd rather her get, you know, whatever percentage from send, getting me sent to that rental car place. I, that's cool. You could take your percentage. That's fine. You ended up helping me. I remember uh, I actually had to like really tell her, thank you for helping me. Like uh, I literally had to put it into, she couldn't understand. So I did the Google translate because I was trying to say it. Ayudas, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I couldn't really get it. And then I put it in Google translate. Like, oh, thank you. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, anyway, 
So a random person comes and picks me up in the car that's mine now. Uh, and he drives me to his office, um, which, of course, is nothing like the Enterprise office, the Enterprise office. But uh, it, it just seemed like a random car lot off the side of the dirt entrance, like kind of dangerous entrance, honestly, like big, uh, big incline rocks, pothole. It's not even potholes because it's just dirt <laughs> ditches. I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> and I get in there and then uh, it. it well, in the car ride, he's like, oh, you can, uh, yeah, we can take that card. What? Why would they not take a card? I'm like, I don't know the numbers. And he's like, no, we can, we can take that. No problem. Um, and I'm still like 80%, you know what I mean? Like, is this going to be good, legit? And then when we get to the office, I'm like, all right, this is a full office, everything. Even though it's like not to the level of enterprise. I'm like, you know what? This is probably a good thing to uh, support a local rental car agency. And I think I'd do it next time, too. So we get through the process. I get the car rented to me. And uh, now it's like an hour past when it was supposed to be. And it's like uh, uh, we do the, you know, we take video of the car. You know, protect yourself. Take a video of the car as you drop it off. So when you drop it back off, um, nobody can say nothing. And, yeah, we I get I get in my car. And I know that there's a, a vegan restaurant on the way to Tulum, about 20 minutes away in this little town called Puerto Morales. And I'm like, all right, bet. That's where I'm heading. Uh, he hands over the keys, you know what I mean? And uh, I got the rental car. <laughs> now, it's a little, you know, it's a little, at least by U.S. standards, um, you know, there's indicator light for the trunk. The trunk doesn't really work. You need the key. Shout out to my wife's car. Same situation. Her her trunk doesn't work like you would expect it to. Um, same thing with my rental. You know, it's dented all over the place. It's not fully detailed on the inside. It's probably older model, maybe like mid mid teens, but it's still like a nice car. You know what I mean? It's uh, by any standard. Um, so I get it. You know what I mean? There's a quarter tank of gas. Um, I know that'll get me enough. And I start driving. <laughs> I start driving. I uh, keep going. You know, I'm getting used to the the local way of driving. I get to. The exit, it's about 20 minutes from where we were. The exit to this uh, this town that has a vegan restaurant, which I was making a beeline for because I was starving at this point. Because, again, I was planning to eat like right when I let, I thought the rental process would be so easy. But add another hour, hour 20 to that whole process. Um, I'm grateful that I got the car. You know what I mean? I'm still a little sus. Like, is this going to be normal? You know what I mean? Is my deposit going to come back? Um, but at the end of the day, I got the car. Everything's good. You're just an hour or so behind and you're with a different company, but everything's okay. You know what I mean? You got to roll with the punches. And this was just a great example of the roll with the punches. You know what I mean? Don't let it get you down. Because I was almost really down. I almost gave up. You know what I mean? You know, I was like, damn, do I have to push my flight up? It's like r- ridiculous thoughts, but I didn't let them intrude too, too much. You know what I mean? Finally, was on my way. I got to the exit to get to the uh, the vegan spot. And then it's re- it gets really fun. You know what I mean? This town, Puerto Morales, is like 20-some minutes from the airport. It's uh, before Playa del Carmen, before Tulum. It's like one of the first little towns. And it's just a little beach town. You know what I mean? And there's like one road in. It's like a couple kilometers long. And there's crocodile crossing signs. It's like, oh, this is new. I'm in a new place. This is really cool. You know, obviously, the highway felt different. Uh but like getting on that little road with crocodile crossing signs, I'm like, all right. So then I get into the town, I park, you know, on the side of the road. I walk over to this little vegan restaurant and then everything gets better instantly. Instantly. I'm like, OK, everything's going to be OK. You know what I mean? You know, Rastafari vibes, uh, good music on, you know what I'm saying? Good, good, good reggae going Uh Guy brings the menu. He's like, you want Spanish or English? And uh, and I'm like, mm, poquito espanol. And he's like, let's do this. Like, let's do Spanish practice. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. You know what? I'm with you on that. And it's two places. It's, a, it's like a, a food place and a juice spot. Yo, the juices were literally, they had seven different juices. <laughs> they corresponded to the chakra system. Like, literally, they had a red juice, and, like, it literally showed a picture of all the chakras. Like, literally how I meditate every single day. And uh, 
<laughs> they had juices for it. So I was like, oh, hell yeah. Uh, like, he came over ready to ready to order. I'm like, see, uh, Hugo numero siete, por favor. Y, uh, dos tacos a pastor. And it was just like, I was like, oh, man, we here. We here. We doing it. Food came out delicious. Came over with the sauces. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this one's... Uh, uh, picante, muy picante, no picante. So it's like mild, you know, oral in reverse order. Spicy, very spicy, not spicy, etc. Tried them all, you know what I mean? And I, I ended up emptying out the whole very spicy one first. And when he came over and like, he's like, you're right. I'm like, me gusto picante, you know what I mean? And he's like, ah, yeah, yeah. It was just such good vibes, you know what I mean? And it was like, all right, I'm here. Everything's gonna be okay. You got your car. You about to go to your Airbnb and everything's going to be smooth. You feel me? It's like, all right, all right. So I'm feeling good now. Uh, you know, paid for the food, got back in the car, headed down to the Airbnb. It was like another hour, 20 or something like that. Um, you know, driving that that stretch of highway, you know, a lot of resorts and then a lot of nothingness. <laughs> uh, it's like either a resort or nothing. You get to Playa, uh, Playa del Carmen, and it's like, that's a big city. I think at least, you know, another resort town, um, you drive through that, uh, get used to these things. Uh, the speed bumps they got are man, next level. There's when, when (laughs) anybody who's driven over there knows exactly what I'm talking about. There's more speed bumps than you've ever experienced in your entire life. And they got these little metal like nubby speed bumps that like force you to slow instead of like rumble strips. It's like these metal like fist sized nubs that like it's like, oh, my God, they really want you to come to a complete stop. And I I mean, yeah, hell yeah, it's smart for safe driving, but it's wild because like you just I've just never experienced it in Israel. There were a lot of uh, speed bumps, but there were more here. (laughs) There were definitely more. And uh, especially going through the cities, it's like insane. And people are making their own lane. And the passing culture is very interesting. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, there's there was like police checkpoints, but they didn't really look occupied, at least for the way I was going. Um, there were more seemingly operating uh, heading towards Cancun. And uh, it was just interesting seeing all this stuff. And I'm about, you know, 30 minutes from Tulum. And my, I need gas. I ran out of gas almost. I, I had like 50 kilometers left. I could have made it to the Airbnb, but I just wanted to get some. Um, and I need to piss so bad. So I go inside the uh, the little gas station store. The bathrooms, of course, clo- closed for COVID. I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? So I get back out and then I uh, pull up to the station. And my man, my attendant, bless his soul, he didn't have any English on him. So we just had the craziest uh, Spanglish conversation ever. It was it was. It was beautiful, you know what I mean? <laughs> and first of all, like, I didn't know how to use the car, obviously, because I just rented it. He's like, can you open a gas tank? And I, I'm tr- I'm literally hitting every button. My hood's popping. There was no button to open a gas tank. It was a handheld one. This thing was stock, you know what I'm saying? This thing had no extras on it. So you got to pull the gas tank open. Um, and he, once he figured that out, and uh, he's like, turn it on, dude. Uh, he's like... <laughs> to like signify turn it on to check if you like the gas level and i'm like it's three quarters oh how do i say that <laughs> you know because i wanted it full but it was only three quarters full and then uh I, it, the communication just wasn't working so it was just like uh you know what, let's just pay for what it is and i gave him a 500 because that was the biggest bill i had and i figured that would cover it and then he pointed it's like oh this is 900 something so i handed two and uh he gave me back something and I think he was telling me, like, okay, you're good. And I'm like, oh, do you need more? So I'm trying to hand him more. He's like, no, you're good. You're good. It was just funny. And I was just like, ah, stupido gringo. And we were just sharing a moment about that. You know, it was fun. So I'm like, all right, now I'm tapped in to, like, a real local experience. You know, that was no English. That was no tourism. You know, he was like, uh, uh, like, queras la chica? Like you want, I'm like, ah, oh, Mary, I got. I showed him the ring. I'm like, uh, he's like, Don, I'm, uh, Boston. He's like, Bosnia, and I'm like, oh, uh, Boston. Uh, Stadios Unidos, uh, Unidos. You see how like rough it is for me to <laughs> on the spot do Spanish. You know what I mean? It's it's easy when you when you have your little translator, you practice it, and then you can do it. But on the spot, you know, you're tested. 
So anyway, that experience is done. Then I keep heading to the Airbnb. Uh, I still got pissed, mind you, like, incredibly. Then you finally pull up to Tulum. It's like, oh, okay. This it. This seems, you know, okay, that's tourist destination. There's the main drag. And then my place, you turn off the main drag. And once you start turning, oh, like, oh. Oh, this is like the the uh the income gap you notice it instantly like more so than anywhere i've ever been you know what i mean like oh this is like extremely developing like it, it this is not like the greatest living conditions and etc cetera, etc cetera. then you, you start you keep driving through and um i'm at this one stoplight and uh like behind me <laughs> this huge like uh camo like 18 wheeler kind of um all camoed out it's a it's like a a small street two lane street everybody's waiting at the light maybe like 15 cars in front of me countless behind me this huge camo like huge truck just gets into the oncoming lane just starts going and honking at everybody to get out of its way you know i couldn't even tell there was no uh writing on it you don't like that was my first moment like oh i'm not even sure Was that police? Was that National Guard? Was that army? Was that cartel? You don't even know. You know what I mean? Because it like wasn't a normal camo. It was just kind of like, kind of a guerrilla camo. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it. They just kind of hand painted it. Like, that was an interesting maneuver to just do in the middle of traffic. (laughs) So I'm just starting to realize, oh yeah, you have no control here, my friend. (laughs) So I'm like, all right, all right. Then finding the Airbnb was a crazy thing because uh, you get to the outskirts of town and there's now it's only dirt roads and trying to figure it out. And I eventually found it, of course, and I get in and it's magnificently beautiful and incredible. Now we're late at night. You know what I'm saying? Um, check in with Smooth. The facility itself is incredible. The guy who helped me had no English on him. So, I'm, again, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to do Spanish. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this guy, he was just, he's just on the grounds. I think uh, he's not one of the Airbnb hosts, but I think he's helping. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he helped me check in and everything. Well, it's not really a check in. It was all uh, all automatic, but he just kind of pointed me to the place and get to my room, unpack a little bit, unwind a little bit, decompress. Finally, like, OK, we're here. Now you need dinner. So I uh, I find that there's a vegan spot downtown. I drive over there again. I'm learning how to drive in this. It's like, oh, this is kind of, this is kind of chaotic. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out how to drive in it. And again, this is my first couple hours there. So I'm like experiencing everything in real time. Like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> like, uh, I f- like my, my beat up car is the nicest car here. <laughs> my beat up rental. It's just a perspective flip. Like after this trip, I don't think I want that Tesla so soon no more. You know what I mean? I'm fine with my Prius. Like, comparatively, outside of the world, uh, you have an incredible... I have an incredible car. Like, what am I doing trying to get more or better? What are we doing? Um, and, you know, people on trucks with, like, 100 people <laughs> packed into the back. Like, kind of saw it in Thailand, but this was even to a different level. Like, uh, much more unsafe. Like, big, big concrete blocks that aren't really strapped in and just a lot of people kind of holding them up like it's like what is happening here (laughs) safety you know what i'm saying so and the city is literally under construction like there's no other way to put it but it's just under construction and it's just like (laughs) there's no other way so anyway i eventually find uh it's like a 10 minute drive i get to the block closest to the vegan shop parked a car you know what i'm saying uh, hop out the car, walk over. Uh, I go to the wrong place, but the guy points me to where it is. He's like, they're actually closed, the place I wanted to go. But he's like, this place right here, uh, they got great vegans tacos. So I'm like, all right, cool. I walk up and she's like, she's like, uh, we're here to go. It's already like 7.30, my dude, it's getting dark. Um, I'm like, all right, we're going to do to go. I wanted to get to the crib. Um, I was planning on going to Chichen Itza the next morning. So it was an early wake up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, get back to or I order you know tacos and uh beans and plantains I'm like oh man let's get this food in you know what I'm saying they got oyster mushroom tacos and you know beans and plantain what well, can't go wrong um she's like you want to sit you can sit in the garden while we, we wait if you want I'm like oh you know what I might as well so I sit out there you know they got cats and I'm like 
ah, everything's good, actually. Why am I stressed? Why am I stressed at all? Everything's chill. Food comes out, pay. Uh, I get I get back in the car, head back to the crib, eat, and it's like the most delicious taco ever. <laughs> Better than the one I had on the way in, for sure. For sure. And the beans and the plantains, like, what are we talking about? It was the most delicious. Uh, I think they're, they're refried beans. I don't even know if I ever had had them before. Because I was an extremely picky, picky eater before uh, veganism. So, you know, I've had a lot of beans, but I don't, I don't think I've ever had them all pasted like that. And it was so good. And obviously vegan, the plantains, best fried plantain I ever had. You know what I mean? And I'm like, all right. All right. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I needed to get water. Oh, on the way back, I needed to get water. So I stopped at like a local uh, 7-Eleven vibe. Um, it's called OXO. You know what I'm saying? So I got in there. Got the water. I grabbed a bunch of water, you know. Uh, everybody's looking at me. I'm obviously the only white dude in there. Because, again, I'm in a local part of town. Everybody's staring at me, <laughs> talking to each other. About me. I'm just like, I'm used to it, though, because I even get that in the States because I just look wild. Uh, but it's just an interesting experience. To, like, everybody's looking at me like, what's, what is this? What is this? And, uh, you know, and the energy wasn't all. You could feel like some of them were, some of the stairs were like, it's got a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Just like a, you could just feel it. You could, you could feel what type of stairs you get. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm like, oh yeah, I, I should probably go home. I should probably, should probably get this water and get right back to the Airbnb. <laughs> Cause that's one thing, you know, you read before visiting is, uh, it's a lot of, it's, it can be decently dangerous if you're in the wrong part of town or if you're, you know, too flashy or st- just like that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Cause the town is literally under construction. So we're talking about um, it's just like either tourists or laborers and there's really no in between. So it's people who have nothing, like literally nothing, like zero dollars, zero pesos, like literally everything they earn that day doing construction, they're going to use that night. Like it's that. And then like rich Americans or Europeans or people from all over the world right next door it the the contradiction is crazy it's the most like the the dichotomy of that the the gap the what like the money gap is insane to see um and it's definitely so prevalent in Tulum specifically and if you've been there you know what I'm talking about um so anyway get my water get back to the crib next morning I plan to go to Chichen Itza so I'd pass out I don't even I'm trying to stream the uh, NBA games you know what I'm saying um, turns out my, my streaming service doesn't work abroad, but NBA league pass works abroad, which is actually really cool. I wish it was like that for the playoffs where you could just use this league pass. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so the plan is the next morning to go to Chichen Itza. Now that's a two hour drive from where I'm at. And they say the best way to do it is to get there, uh, before it opens so you can beat the crowds and it opens at eight. Um, but I read it open at nine, but of course that was in the time zone I was in. They're in uh, the central U.S. time zone. Um, so it's one hour back. So it's like, it's really 8 a.m. Even though I looked it up and it said nine because local time is eight. So I was like, all right, I'm going to have to wake up. It's already like nine or 10 p.m. I'm like, ooh, and I'm dead exhausted because we woke up at like four or something in the morning to catch that flight and been through all this today, even two hours of driving and chaos with the rental two different big flights and it's exhausted but i still had to set that alarm you know what i mean so <laughs> chichen itza next one i mean that's the point of the trip i needed to get to chichen itza like needed to that's the, that's the thing you know what i mean that's need to experience that that's how we started this episode so set my alarms i fall asleep peacefully um you know what i mean uh, good shower, you know, got cleaned up, um, good bed, you know, there's bugs everywhere, that's one thing about my Airbnb is, like, it's a big thatched roof, it's, like, probably, like, 25, 30 feet high, like, it's incredibly gorgeous and architecturally stunning, um, little hut on the inside and out, but since it's, like, a thatched roof, you know, the, the door don't even close, like, the sliding doors, it's not, like, it's not, like, we're dealing with, uh, precision engineering here this is more like a nature experience and i knew that book and i read the reviews that there was hella bugs and stuff you know i had them i I moved probably like 
40 bugs <laughs> in my time in that Airbnb, 40 of them, like from inside to outside, like spiders, like a massive like roach type thing. I didn't even know what it was, like hella big ants and stuff like that. You know, it wasn't a big deal, obviously. I knew what I was getting into, but I uh, had a very peaceful sleep and my alarm went off super early. You know what I'm saying? It was time. Now, I I took a long time getting ready. You know what I mean? Not getting ready, but like getting just getting functional. Um, I'm looking up like, can I get coffee on the drive? <laughs> they had an, a, an espresso machine in the room and it turns out you can't get coffee on the drive. And I'm looking this up like at 5 a.m. or yeah, like 5 a.m. Because I set the alarms for five. I wanted to leave at six, ended up leaving at 640. <laughs> so I was a little behind, but you know what I mean? Uh, I'm I'm chugging espressos. <laughs> I don't even like hot coffee like that, so I pour a little bit of the cold water in there. It's kind of like an Americano, I guess, uh, not iced or anything, but I'm drinking, I drank like three of them, trying to get myself hyped up, because I'm like half asleep still, because again, I was dead tired, but I didn't want to push it back, because I also really felt important about visiting Chichen Itza on May 11th, just because 5 and 11, I believe, are like these sacred numbers um, when they're together. Uh, we could talk about that another time, but I just feel 11 and 5 and 5 and 11, it's just like it's a very important thing. So I wanted to make sure I went there that day. I, of course I didn't want to be there, um, with all the tour buses. So I was trying to leave early. I figured, you know, I, I did my Googles and there's literally, I was like, Oh, there must be some, some little cafe on the ride. (laughs) Then when I did my Google, I'm like, Oh, you're driving through just nothing. There's nothing. There's like a couple little towns, like little towns, but you won't pass anything on this drive. It's like, fuck, are you kidding me? So I wasn't even sure if I have a place to stop in peace. So I'm like, all right, let me drink these coffees. Let me take care of my bowels. You know what I'm saying? And then we can get going. So did my thing, got back and I'm in the car at 640 to take off. So I start driving. You leave Tulum town, right? And then it kind of instantly becomes like kind of nothing, <laughs> just jungle there was a, a Jaguar crossing sign, like within 10 minutes outside of Tulum. <laughs> it's like, oh, we're in the jungle. <laughs> and uh, luckily the sun was risen. So I wasn't like, cause I mean, at night, that's when the Jaguar roams and stuff like that. So <laughs> I didn't have to deal with that. But this is when I first get introduced to, you know, this, uh, the highway culture of, uh, or the, I guess it's more the back road highway, the local roads culture like it says 90 kilometers if you're going anything less than 120 kilometers people are passing you on a two-lane road (laughs) like what is going on and i'm trying to drive the speed limit mind you because uh i'd read so many stories about people being extorted by the police i think even my dad told me a story when he was in mexico city he got extorted by the police with someone like that's just a thing so I didn't want to deal with that, obviously. Like, why would anybody want to deal with that? So I'm driving the speed limit. And eventually I, uh, you know, you, you you pass the concrete trucks and stuff, though, because uh, that just makes sense. Like a normal driver, you pass the tractors on the road and stuff. But once you pass that, there's like two towns you pass once you first exit Tulum. And once you pass those two towns, it's nothing. And the towns are little, mind you, like little. Like, uh, so I'm in the middle of the jungle. There's a stretch that's like a ton of kilometers that, there literally is zero. There's nothing. Just just jungle for like probably like a hundred of the, the kilometers. There's nothing. <laughs> like what is going on here? I eventually get behind this uh this clearly tourist rented car because it's like it's uh two white people in the front seat. Um uh, it's like a new car, first of all. Like like I said earlier, my car, which is like a little older, definitely beat up and dented and everything and kind of dirty, is like I was like, oh, this is like one of the nicest cars here. I'm glad I didn't get an Enterprise brand new car and just stick out even worse than I do with this one. Because <laughs> uh, all the cars are like beat up, you know what I mean? Um, and it, it's not a bad thing. It's just what it is. Um, so I found a clear tourist car and there's they have a, uh, I knew it was a tourist too because in the in the back uh, like seat area, they had like, it was like a little, uh, a little Chevy Sp- Barker, one of those little, little, uh, little Chevy type vibes where it's like a hatchback, but it's like not as big as a Prius, like a little one. And they had a little straw hat there. I'm like, oh, it's a tourist, obviously. <laughs> and they were driving the speed limit. So I'm like, all right, let me chill with them for a while. So I chill with them for a while. 
in a while. And I'm, I was kind of annoyed. Like, I feel like they're going slow. Like, I feel like everybody's passing us. And I see even tourists are passing. I'm like, and I look down at the Google Maps. I added 10 minutes to my trip. I'm like, oh, you, are you kidding me? Nah, I can't have this. So I pass them, leave them in the dust. And at that moment, I'm like, all right, if I get extorted, I get extorted. <laughs> so I'm get, I get a, I keep driving. We get close to the, you know, we get close to Chichen Itza eventually. Just a lot of driving. Once you get kind of close to Chichen Itza, because it's like a two hour, it ended up being like two hours, uh, 10 minutes for me. Um, but once you get like a half hour out, the little, t- you start passing through a couple little towns. Um, and they're like getting ready for the day you know what i mean like uh with like hats uh, like sombreros you know what i mean little little knickknacks uh, on the like when you get to those speed bumps they're just standing literally right at the speed bump with like stuff to sell you it's 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 genius honestly i can only imagine what it's like on a you know peak tourist uh day and i found out i went in low season which just by coincidence i didn't really try to um go in any season i just needed to go at that moment but it's it's definitely low season uh there you know after you think about it after all the spring breaks and all that and um less people kind of go in the summer to a hotter place so it's like it was low season may so i recommend may as the time to go as well um so anyway you pull up so i got i went through all these little towns it was interesting seeing all this stuff uh and I get within like two minutes of Chichen Itza. I'm like, all right, here we are. We're finally here. And you get within two minutes. Like, I'm telling you, like half a kilometer, a kilometer or something. <laughs> There's like four dudes on the road with like orange flags and vests and kind of filtering you, like telling you to turn in. I'm like, and it looks like a turn into the parking lot. And I, I know I'm looking at the GPS. I'm like, we're not at the entrance, but the entrance is like right there. I could see the entrance. So I'm like, Oh, they must be overflow because I'm thinking, well, now it's like 850, like when I pull up and I'm like, oh, they I'm so late that the parking lot like is completely full and now I got to park in the overflow. Like, Oh, fuck, man. So I just blindly followed the flag, right? Because the guy's waving me in. I'm like, all right, let me get in there. I go and park and I get a ticket for parking. I'm like, OK. And he's like, uh, all right. All uh, right you pay 60 pesos i'm like okay this seems now i'm like is this official is this unofficial what's happening here um and then another another car tourist parks right next to me i'm like okay maybe this is official i think this is fine i gather the stuff i need for the day fill my little panty fanny pack you know what i'm saying um put the other stuff in my trunk and uh you know i had like a change of clothes i wasn't really sure what i was going to do with the rest of the day i might have i was thinking about going to a cenote which is like these beautiful swimming holes. Um, So I had like wet clothes to change into and another dry set after that and like sunscreens. And, you know, I just had had a bunch of stuff. So I just got what I needed. And then I started walking towards the entrance and uh, (laughs) uh, instantly like, and I had heard this, like getting to the entrance, it's like a swarm of tour guides and all this and trying to sell you more stuff. So I'm like, okay, this is normal, still normal. Um, some guys like his first time and all this. And, um, it's like, yeah. And he's like, do you want the, do you want the tour guide? Do you want to go by yourself? And I was like, I'm just doing by myself. Um, you know what I mean? That was my goal for that. Um, retrospectively, maybe get a tour. I don't know. It could be a good idea to get a tour guide there, but I'll get there when I get there. Um, so he's like, oh, and you got to pay the parking now. And I'm like, uh, okay, I paid the parking 60 pesos. Again, it's nothing insane. Um, it's like a dollar and something, uh, five, so something like that. Anyway, um, so I'm like, all right. And then I notice I get to the road level, you know, because they, they force me off the road into that parking lot. I'm like, oh, there's people just passing these guys with flags and turning into the entrance. So I'm like, ah, oh, did I just get scammed? Now I got to cross a little two lane highway, you know what I'm saying? And get over to the entrance and I get there and now there's mad people flagging me down, like guys with, uh, on motorbikes, like, do you want to ride to the entrance? It'll cut. I'm like, no, 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 I'm just going to walk this. And cause it was only like, again, it was like less than a kilometer. So I was like, all right, let me just walk this. And at this point I'm kind of fuming. I'm like, I think I just got scammed. Why am I so gullible? What, what is this? What is it about me? <laughs> Keep walking. 
eventually I get to the the entrance and I keep seeing everybody driving in a, a, a bus tour bus. And I'm like, damn it, I'm losing time and I'm losing uh, the emptiness that I was trying to like experience at Chichen Itza. And, and then I get to the parking lot and they're charging 80 pesos at the official parking lot. So I'm like, hey, I saved 20 pesos. I didn't actually get too, too scammed. I got scammed a little bit. I gotta admit, I definitely got scammed a little bit, but eh, eh, it's fine. I saved 20 pesos and I get to walk a little bit in the nice warm sun and it felt good. So boom, get to the line to pay for tickets, pay for a ticket. Um, again, a strange, another just strange random thing is like, I wanted to pay with my debit card and it's like, uh, <laughs> so you can pay with your debit card, but you'll also have to pay like I think 85 pesos like cash and I'm like okay so I gave over uh like 205 pesos so I get even amount of change that was a disaster because it was just like America like handing a cashier uh you know like if, if something costs 85 cents handing a cashier um 20 dollars and five cents like something like that you know what I mean just so you get less change um so she ended up giving me my five pesos back and then just giving me a bunch of change and it's like all right all right fine 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 and i gotta pee obviously so i pee and i grab a little bottle of water at the at the little merch stand and <laughs> the second i gave <laughs> the second i uh <laughs> got the water now there's a massive line like three tour buses let out <laughs> i'm like are you shitting me like three tour buses got in line to enter like not buy tickets because they're on a tour so they just have to enter and now it's a huge line to get in i'm like are you kidding me so i get to the back of the line and eventually make it through there's a nice couple behind me complimenting me on my hair and i'm like thank you you know what i mean just good stuff then we get to the punch the ticket and I get through obviously and then there's a bag check i have my little fanny pack and the GoPro is now an issue. So I'm like, I kind of knew this would be a thing, but I don't know. I read some people were able to sneak it in, except like the guy next to me had a huge bag um, inside of his bag. And uh, the guy asked, what's in this bag? And he said, toiletries. And I'm like, damn, well, I can't really lie. You know what I mean? <laughs> so <laughs> I couldn't get away with bringing the GoPro. He points me to another desk. I got to pay another 50 pesos or something like that, I believe. And then I get the the recording ticket and then I can go in. And now I got to walk through this maze of tour buses amount of people. I weave in and out uh, down the ancient city. And that's the cool thing, man. So Chichen Itza is actually an ancient city. It's not just La Cast El Castillo. El Castillo is the big pyramid, the big temple that everybody knows. Chichen Itza is actually this city. It used to be a thriving Mayan city with tons and tons of people. It was an epicenter of the Mayan community. Um, large city. It's ruins everywhere. And the main temple in the in the kind of center. But there's so much other stuff there. Um, I wanted to get to the, you know, the main temple first. Because that's that's the thing. So I'm, there's, you're walking along these ancient roads. And uh, there's vendors on either side telling you uh, one U.S. dollar. And... Uh, like or just selling you stuff you know what i mean it's just uh normal tourism stuff um weave in and out all the people get through and then boom it's there right in front of me el castillo this is jaw dropping it's truly a wonder of the world it's beyond impressive beyond fathomable how this is made <laughs> you know what i mean it's it's infinitely beautiful and shockingly impressive. It's incredible. And I just start walking around. it. It's huge. It's massive. It's like it's bigger than pictures, obviously, of just being there in its presence. Like, wow, it's a huge energy vortex thing. It's incredible. And now there's a bunch of there's a bunch of tour groups going. And now I'm kind of like listening in. There's a very interesting thing where if you stand uh in front of one of the staircases up and interestingly enough each side i believe is 91 steps times that all together and then there's five steps at the top you get 365 days the mayan calendar it's they they figured it out and they built the whole temple around it to mirror the trips around the sun it's insane stuff but there's a really cool thing if you stand at the base that if you clap 
it'll the vibration of the noise will go up into the top of the temple and what will be reverberated back is the sound of a local bird it's it doesn't even make sense like and especially how ancient the the temple is that this was literally like engineered in like to understand the sound frequency and the sound waves and know that if you build this sort of cement thing or what I think it's limestone is actually what it's made of if you build this sort of in this certain angle we can actually get this bird sound to echo back and just fascinating stuff it's incredible um I'm just in shock and I'm kind of eavesdropping on all the tours and you know I get a I get another tourist to take a picture of me I get a picture in front of it and I'm just soaking it in you know what I mean I'm I'm just I probably stayed at that main temple for the first time for like damn near an hour probably before I even ventured out it's just shocking how impressive it is I'm sitting I'm just kind of basking in the presence of it it's truly energetic truly special um now I didn't have those feelings that my mom spoke of that I shared at the top of the podcast I didn't feel as though I was there before it it felt like something new um and that was you know as good to know you know it's not everybody shares the same experience and I was just kind of in awe of the whole thing it was wild um then after really kind of you know learning more and just being there and realizing how impressive it is I, I ventured off into the rest of the city there's tons and tons of stuff tons of ruins this is where I think a tour guide may have come in handy to actually learn about what every building was. And I definitely know next time I will get a tour guide, but also I will have my wife there, you know what I mean? So it'll be uh, a little more cost efficient because it was just me. So just me and a tour guide is not a good <laughs> use of money if you could split that. Um, not to say like split, but like more like efficient use of money. Um, so... I was walking around and there you get to the cenote sagrado which is the sacred cenote this is actually where the sacrifices were done um you know you you hear about uh mayan culture and sacrifice people and this is actually where it happened this is why they know that because at the bottom of this cenote were countless um human remains <laughs> This is a, it's a completely jaw-droppingly beautiful sinkhole into the earth that has this beautiful, incredible lake. And you understand why in Mayan culture it was a revered thing. It was a sought-after thing to be sacrificed. It happened on various special occasions, maybe once or twice a year, lunar and solar New Year's, like very important stuff. And just to see that 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 cenote that sinkhole is incredible. Um, there's more of the city, and it's incredible. Like I don't know, I don't have enough eloquent things to say about Chichen Itza specifically. It's a must do. You must visit. It's truly a wonder of the world. The city is incredible. And next, and get a get a tour guide, honestly. Like. Uh, or download the audio. A bunch of people were walking around with headphones and learning as they're walking. I was just kind of freeballing it. Um, I would definitely get a tour guide next time because the following day I actually did the Tulum ruins with a tour guide, and that's how I kind of know about that specific cenote, some of the facts about it. Um, we'll get there in a minute. Uh, so yeah, I spent a bunch of time at, in the city of Chichen Itza in the ancient Mayan city. It's incredible. Um, Eventually, I decided it was time to, I mean, I was, I was, first of all, I was getting absolutely destroyed by the sun. I put some sunscreen on and extremely hot, like 100 degrees plus Fahrenheit, very high humidity. Um, I, I mean, obviously, I knew that going into it, so I was, I was fine with that, but it just kind of wears on you after a little bit from like 850 to 1250. I think I was in the city itself, so that's like four, a good four hours you can plan on spending um at Chichen Itza if you want to go uh 
and I exited, you know, I walked back uh, down the long road past the parking lot. That was 20 peso more at that moment. I was like, damn, I wish I just didn't, <laughs> I wish I wasn't so gullible and <laughs> just found the actual parking lot instead of paying for that random parking lot. Um, but on the walk down, there was a, there was one guy with like his, uh, I think his wife, right? They looked like an older couple and just selling water. Um, and that's what I wanted. I wanted water. I didn't want any of the knickknacks or anything, but, um, I got a water and ended up being a great conversation, really good energy with this guy. So I ended up, I did buy, did buy a little knickknack, this little handmade Mayan calendar made out of clay. This guy made, he's telling me, you can see it's handmade. It's a, definitely not a mass production thing. He made it out of clay and this is the ancient Mayan calendar. It's incredible. Um, it's based off the cycle of Venus. They were the ancient Mayan people had Venus mapped out perfectly, and they were able to create a whole calendar system based on it. And it's fascinating. And again, I'm not the guy to teach you about this stuff at this moment, but definitely go on the tour there so you could learn about it. Uh, got that little Mayan calendar from them, and then I headed back to the car, typed in. So there's a nearby city, uh, Valadiad or Valadiad, Valadad. Validad. Validad. <laughs> it's a nearby city, about 40 minutes away. Um, on the drive in, you kind of bypass it uh, because it's like a, it's an actual city and uh, they have a vegan restaurant in there. So I decided to stop there on the way to get some food. Again, this is it's like one. Now I'm starving, obviously. Um, get into this little city. Uh, the GPS takes me to the wrong location. But this city is a completely different vibe than Tulum. This is kind of like uh, a clearly developed city um, it has some colonial architecture which uh, I mean obviously we hate colonialism but it does make for a pretty city uh, especially with all the different colors all the buildings were painted uh, you know blue yellow red it was an incredible little city I I'm, I'm kind of uh, next time I'm in this area I plan to spend at least a night or two there like it's phenomenal place great energy great vibes there was no feeling of uneasiness or unsafeness which again in Tulum I felt uneasy and unsafe a few times <laughs> which is just it's just interesting I mean uh in this city nothing like that um so beautiful place um found you know found a little place to park near the restaurant uh the, again, the GPS took me to the wrong spot, but then I just found it 10 minutes, 10 minutes away. So I eventually get to the restaurant. Super, super duper hippied out is uh, quite a vibe in there. Um, obviously not the, uh, well, more so two of the workers <laughs> or not two of the workers, excuse me, two of the customers. Like these girls probably just left Coachella and did DMT for the first time or something. Cause like, or they just left the ayahuasca ceremony because <laughs> uh, they were just talking um they had all this crazy face paint on it. It was sick. I'm not trying to judge. I'm just saying, I'm trying to give you the vibe, like, like as out there hippie as you could possibly be. And I love it. I love it. But it was, <laughs> that's the vibe of the, the uh, restaurant in there. And it was great. Right. So I get in there, uh, order these tacos, tacos rajas. And I didn't even know what they were. I just, I saw a review on happy cow that said they were incredible. So I got them. There are these poblano peppers, like kind of roasted and prepared in such a way. And it was, uh, honestly it was one of the so I had so many tacos on this trip but it was one of the two or three best that I had um can't recommend it enough reason alone to go back to that city and another thing they did there um at this little restaurant was uh they made their own um sesame seed milk like a tahini milk uh similar to like a like a cashew nut milk or an almond milk they were making tahini milk which was phenomenal so I got a little uh a tahini milk latte um uh they actually called it halva milk uh halva milk uh, latte and they made it a frap too so it was perfect because it was super hot and again i had to drive another hour and a half so it was like the perfect thing and uh like kind of a, a frappy slushy uh coffee drink it was perfect so i want to spend more time in that city um and i will next time but it just happened to be a lunch spot for me so i only spent about an hour in the, within the city itself and then driving um, through it to go back to Tulum, I drove on the main drag for 
a bunch of kilometers probably saw most of the city and it just seems so fun and such a good place good vibes that was actually one of the things those uh coachella girls said they were like uh tulum is just not grounded at all it's, there's a sense about it that's just not like this this place is so grounded and healing and energy like just all the words you know what i mean they had all the words they had all the spiritual words on deck <laughs> and i agreed i agreed i just uh I don't think I talk like that anymore. I probably to you, I probably do, but just letting you know, there's a lot more levels out there <laughs> as far as just speaking in spirituality. Um, but yeah, so I headed back to Tulum, and on the drive back to Tulum, the spiritual experience I was looking for uh, at Chichen Itza, I had listening to Nipsey Hustle, <laughs> and that just tells you everything about me, probably. <laughs> but yeah, uh, just that the, the first six tracks on Victory Lap, I just absolutely blasted in the middle of the jungle um it's funny because the first track on victory lap victory lap he says uh uh flew to cancun smoking cubans on the boat then docked at tulum just to smoke listening to music at the mayan ruins true devotion on the bluest ocean you know what i'm saying it's just like it was actually where i was so the the stuff hit harder um the music hit harder you know what i mean and there's just there was some great stuff. The song with Diddy, you know what I'm saying, and the Party Next Door sample. I actually can't say the title of the song. <laughs> uh, but it was specifically that song. And, man, it just it did something for it. It was like a spirit. I got chills listening to it in the car, you know, bumping as loud as I possibly can. Uh, in the jungle, you know, in the Yucatan Peninsula. Nobody around. Thunderstorm happening. A lightning storm. It was just wildness um and that was incredible i damn near got brought to tears just from how beautiful like you could you could do anything you want to do in this lifetime and just kind of just having that sink in it's beautiful um so yeah then i got I drove through a little lightning thunderstorm that was interesting <laughs> in the in the jungle of the Yucatan Peninsula during a, a lightning thunderstorm, torrential downpour. Definitely an experience. It did go away after about 20 minutes. Um, and then it was just smooth sailing back to the Airbnb. Got home, you know what I'm saying? Uh, again, we we're probably talking like five. It was a massively full day. I was exhausted. Um, went back to the same restaurant as the night before. And I, this time I got some tamales and oh my God goodness were they delicious i uh my favorite thing to do is just ask what's your favorite you know what i mean to the person who's making the food <laughs> and she was like uh this one and i i had two and of course the one she picked was the better one they were delicious um and then i got to go the same order i had last night because <laughs> i knew i'd probably be hungry later um and i was i so i got the tacos and uh beans and plantains again so then i'm laying in bed um i got the you know, I got the whatever game was on that night. It's just on um, on the iPad. And I'm like, what am I going to do tomorrow? My plan originally was, you know, finally sleep in and everything. And um, I just go on, you know, on Airbnb, if you've ever been during, if you just look at your stay, they show you all these experiences nearby that you could do. And the second one, so the first one was, a, I think, like a big, like a, it literally said, like, cenotes of instagram of the yucatan like the, it was it was i mean if you're looking for that it was solid i think it was like 190 bucks or whatever and they took you to a bunch of cenotes for instagram pictures <laughs> so obviously i'm like i don't care about that but the next one was tulum ruins without the crowds i'm like oh this is interesting it was 47 dollars. so i'm like oh 47 for those of you who know that's a the second most important number to me after 11 um it's a very important number, and it's like, all right, that means something probably. And then I started reading it. Uh, it seemed like a great tour. All the reviews were incredible. I looked at the reservation. There was an open spot tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. So I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll do that. You know, maybe. Um, the games and whatever game was on is over at this point because um, we're an hour behind. So at like 10 p.m. to loom time is. is <laughs> life is over on uh, the East Coast NBA stuff. So I'm just like, all right. I started, I'm like, you know what? Let me watch these. Uh... No, you know what actually happened? Uh, it was during a halftime um, or during a TV timeout. One of the uh, 
one of the team's dance crews was doing oh it was a it was the memphis game um it was the the day where memphis won by like a million anyway uh their their dance team was doing a uh, dance to a lotto song it's given uh, and i'm like all right this song is crazy i've never heard this before so i looked it up i watched a little music video. it's not a music video it's like one of those uh like just moving images um they called it a visualizer so i'm like all right this this song is fire uh and then i'm like oh i should see if nip has a music video for victory lap so i put on uh the music video for victory lap and i'd never seen it before he's in shalom during the music video i'm like if this is a sign and the at the beginning it's like where we at nip he's like at the tulum ruins i'm like all right i gotta book that tour because i had just like put it in my mind like you know i could probably do this tomorrow i was like 80 percent on it because i really wanted to sleep really wanted to sleep but just seeing that music video you know what i mean just put me over the edge like you know what do it do it do it so um the 80 percent went to 100 i booked it uh message the the lady because it said message me on whatsapp to so i have your contact boom 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 um and i fell asleep before she even replied <laughs> i woke up the next morning and uh it's like thank you i can't wait to have you on the tour and it had all the details like you meet at the 7-eleven blah, blah 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 um so i get ready you know what i mean the next morning i drive over to the seven the 7-eleven we're supposed to meet at uh Again, all the coffee shops are closed because it's too early. So I did the Nespresso at the crib um, and I get over there uh, to the to the parking lot and I get over to the group. It's so there was a and I'm not the, I'm not late. I showed up at like eight on the dot and I was like, damn it, they're going to I'm late. Kind of so there's a little traffic on the way in. Um, my GoPro just powered off. Cause it ran out of battery. Uh, hold on, let me pause this real quick. Okay, YouTube audience, I'm sorry. GoPro died. We're already an hour 40 deep, so I'm not going to put a new battery in because that video file would be massive. So just audio from here on out. And this is probably better experienced audio anyway. But I know there's some of you who are watching on YouTube. Anyway, it's a group of... Uh, four people the next two showed up there was two already there it was like a older middle-aged kind of couple from washington state um and then there was two dudes from australia who showed up on their bike um like rental bikes or whatever like pedal bikes you know what i mean uh and the host tanya who was like phenomenal and uh she starts walking us down to the ruins she's saying she's from mexico city um she started telling me the facts i spoke earlier on how this whole area is brand new um like they're as a person from Mexico City, Ciudad de Mexico, she was like, there's no culture here. You know what I mean? Um, apart from the stuff that is exclaimed on like tours and stuff, like there's no museums. She's like, obviously there's Mexican people and Mexican culture here, but as far as like museums and plays and, uh, you know, that type of stuff, that's not here because this is all tourist fan front <laughs> tourist facing and then she dropped the bomb that tulum just just got made and i'm like and she's like cancun was only here for 50 years i'm like wow this is was blowing my mind because obviously my whole life i've heard cancun is like that's the tourist spot etc i never really put two and two together it didn't even exist until it was probably a town just like tulum of five thousand people that became a huge tourist industry place so anyway, I'm like, this is before we even get to the gate. And she's already dropping all of this incredible information, um, explaining that the this is a low jungle area, uh, as you can see with the, the height of the trees and just giving all this beautiful information. It's like when this floods, these trees would do this. And they're actually so strong that they grow through uh, the anything. And it was incredible information. And then we finally get through the entrance. Um, and the ancient city of Tulum is this kind of rectangle. It sits on the coastline. Um, it's a walled-in city, but it wasn't walled in to protect from anything. It was uh, walled in to kind of separate like an upper class and a lower class. It's a, it had sort of a caste system. Um, and she's teaching us all this stuff. Uh, it was found completely in ruin and abandoned. Uh, it was never 
seen uh, by like colonists or whatever as a develop it, like with people in it fully functioning um, because they had actually abandoned the city when they had heard uh, from the Aztec people uh, to the north that you know the Spanish were coming and they're bringing disease and they're murdering and etc cetera, etc cetera. so the city of Tulum itself was the ancient city the ruins were abandoned um, and left kind of untouched for hundreds and hundreds of years so <laughs> when it was found relatively you know recently to start getting uh, the jungle torn out of it it was fully encapsulated by the jungle already all the walls were grown through with massive trees and it's fascinating how quickly nature takes over um, so we go in the entrances are fascinating it's just these little uh you know little things you have to duck through to like stone little entrance kind of like an arch but different it's fascinating it's incredible um there's four entrances or something like that or five there's five. Oh, and there's only three walls it's a walled city but the other one of the walls so it's like a rectangle so the long way of the rectangle there's one wall and then there's two short walls the other supposed long wall is actually just a cliff to the ocean so it didn't need a wall because it was a cliff um incredible just like it's beautiful huh so then we start learning about the city itself and this is why i suggest taking a tour at chichen itza because all of this information i just had no idea about uh that would have that also translated to Chichen Itza. I was taught at this smaller scale city of Tulum ruins. So Tulum was another Mayan city, very small. They say um, uh, boy, just looking at the the rectangle is small, you know what I mean? But they say around the city there was uh, definitely thousands and thousands of people like living in the suburb of the Walden city um, in these little huts, but within the city were the only stone buildings that ended up standing the test of time. Um, and it was just, there's so much I learned on this tour. Like, for example, the Mayan people didn't have a negative view on dark or night or kind of like the ideology of comparatively to like uh, Catholicism, which was indoctrinated with uh, into Mexico at a certain point um, with the Spanish, uh, how like hell is such a negative view, the, the dark or the underworld or the negative had no connotation on it. It just, that's what it was. Um, the day had no, the, the light, the, the heaven, there's no connotation besides that's just what it is. Um, they actually revered the deity of the underworld there was no fear of it uh one of so i asked a question on the tour about the jaguars what was the relation of jaguars to the mayan people and she exclaimed the jaguar so i asked is the jaguar feared or revered and she's like it's very so much revered um it's a sacred animal there was no uh eating of it there was no um there, it, it was not like ridden or captured or they understood how powerful it was within nature is uh, obviously a society fully connected to nature. They knew um, that it, it was a, it was clearly an important thing as it was a top predator. The only time it was ever even messed with was when a warrior had to prove its worth and it would go out and if it could hunt a jaguar and return with its pelt, it was considered a master warrior and it was like in a new status of society that was the only time the jaguar was ever negatively or even hurt or touched if that makes sense um the city itself it, for a small rectangle it you have to picture that the whole thing was uh so they say that there was actually no jungle within they actually had uh completely kind of paved it over with this stucco material with like limestone dust and water to make this stucco sort of concrete. Um, and it was like a completely white glowing uh, like floor. There was no grass. It was a, uh, it was like a glowing thing because they wanted it to reflect in the nighttime of the moon. So everything would be seen. Same with the highway I had drove in the day before this elevated, uh, 
highway, like a normal highway that just cuts through the jungle in a perfectly straight line. Um, she was saying the ancient Mayans also built highways and not like trails through the jungle, but elevated highways covered in this limestone stucco to illuminate the path through the night. It was painted in this white so the moon would reflect off of it and you could see where you're going. Now, Tulum being on the water was an important port city for the Mayans. And another thing about Mayan culture, it wasn't like there was one king type entity that ruled all of the Mayan people. It was sort of like different cities and city states and just interacting with each other with a shared mother tongue and a shared culture. But it wasn't as though the ruler of Chichen Itza had any say on what the rulings of Tulum were doing. Instead, they would obviously trade with each other um, because Tulum was a port city. So they would have mine people row uh, their canoes up from Andorres, Belize, Guatemala, all the way up the coast. Uh, Well, I guess not Guatemala. Well, some part of Guatemala, but you get what I'm saying. This is where the mine people resided. This is their home, uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, Guatemala, Andorres, Belize, is this is the home so people from this region this is the mayan people um and like i said earlier there they did not they did not die um there's still over five million mayan people living today instead just when the colonials came they being extremely smart and harmonious with nature understood that they could retreat into the jungle and not have to deal with them because they wouldn't understand how to operate in the jungle while the mayans of course knew the jungle inside and out so boom, um, fascinating. Another thing uh, within this tour, I learned so much on this tour. It's not even funny. Like just take the tour <laughs> to Loom Ruins Without Crowds hosted by Tanya. It's the greatest tour ever. Take it uh, if you're ever in Tulum and have that opportunity. Um, learn so much. I mean, for example, on some of the ancient hieroglyphs on some of the temple in town i mean we're talking uh, again it's so small the the city the walled city is like it, there's maybe like 20 30 buildings tops so we're literally looking at everything like this is a house that was probably used by someone of high status because it was this big like we're literally it's so in depth because of the scale of the city you could literally learn about every part of it it's fascinating so what one of the um sort of temples and you know it's a temple because of the hieroglyphs on it were deities right so on this corner there is a face of a young man and on the opposite corner of an older man right there's the duality right then there's a uh, a hieroglyph that shows the goddess of fertility um feminism this type of energy and next to her is a character uh, a hieroglyph of a baby being born holding its umbilical cord like a, a live baby now on the mirror side You have a baby being choked by its umbilical cord because the Mayan people understood that everything in nature is balanced. There is life, there is death, there is no connotation on it, it just is. This wasn't a a hieroglyph supposed to uh, like scare you, it was supposed to show the balance of this. Then they have a very important god, I believe the deity was the upside down god, (laughs) the upside down deity, um, essentially signifies it coming from above. similar to like an Israeli Hamsa in uh, Judaism, like the Hamsa, it's coming down from above. It's supposed to signify this sort of from, <laughs> from a different, a different ether and uh, a different dimension sort of. Uh, and this was another thing that the Mayan people believed was they understood that these deities weren't people or anything. They, they were just making characters of them. They really knew this. They knew that they were just observing phenomena of nature and attaching relatable imagery to it but they weren't hiding it under the veil of a religion as we see today um they were just they just they knew that this was the case it's it's so it's so loaded i could go forever on this tour alone um but yeah with the hieroglyphs so on the same building that i was talking about they have the upside down person who's the most almost revered deity in the culture but above it was the deity of the underworld because they had all of this life stuff on this one layer, this beautiful life uh, deities, they had to put a deity of the underworld on top to signify the balance of it. It's just so, it's perfect. It's perfectly balanced to society and culture. I, 
I can't exclaim enough how incredible it is. Um, so more on the Mayans, we have uh, the sit. So the port city of Tulum itself was situated insanely. So there's a giant reef uh, running along the coast of the Yucatan uh, all the way down through Guatemala, Honduras. It's the second biggest coral reef in the world behind the Australian one. Um, and it makes it impenetrable to like large boats and stuff, uh, even smaller canoes. You can't, you know, sail through it. But somehow, <laughs> somehow the Mayan people knew that there was a very small break in this reef that was perfect, that you could perfectly line up with your city of Tulum. And they built this city right on this very small passageway that only the Mayan people knew. Now, this is actually part of the reason why the colonizers never were able to see Tulum in function, because they couldn't get their boats there. They saw a city glowing, because I told you, everything was white. It was glowing in the moonlight, glowing in the day, because it was a functioning city. You could see it from the ocean, but you couldn't get there because your boat couldn't pass through this giant coral. <laughs> Now, of course, the, the Spaniards and the, they were stationed over in Cuba. So you could if you look at a map, you see that. But um, the Tulum people, the Mayan people of Tulum built a what is thought to be, but it's unsure. The main temple in this ruin is thought to be sort of a lighthouse of sorts because it's lined up perfectly <laughs> with this gap. In the reef, like in the middle of the city, there's this giant building on the edge of a cliff over the ocean that lines up perfectly with the gap in the reef. Like, are you kidding me? Like, at that point of the tour, I was like, come on. <laughs> like, obviously, I knew that this is this is true, but uh, it's just like so in sync with nature that they built that. It's phenomenal. It's incredible. Um I'm sure I'll I have even I have so much more to say about the ruins itself and the culture and the people itself but I'm going pretty long here so I'm going <laughs> to speed through the story a little bit um so boom after the tour uh we're just kind of free to roam so I roam a little bit more see a couple more of the areas that weren't on the tour uh, mostly like nature paths and hanging out along the cliff of the beach and just soaking in all that energy is beautiful um and then it did get very crowded. So it truly was uh, the ruins before the crowds. So uh, that's a big plus of the tour. And then um, so if you go to the exit, the cool thing is they're attached uh, by this kind of road bike pathy thing to the free public beach of Tulum. So I start walking down this path because I had done some research that like there's some free public beaches. I didn't know that they were connected to the ruins that I didn't know. But I did know that um like the beach that it said on the sign was like, oh, that's one of the free beach. That's that's free Tulum Beach. And it said like public beach. That's what the sign said, like in the English part. And I'm like, oh, my God, is that right here, too? Right, I'm dressed enough for the beach. Let me walk over there. Uh, so I start walking towards the beach. You get to the beach and it's one of the most probably the most beautiful beach I've ever been to in my entire life. Actually, um, not even probably actually. I mean, it's it was full. Like the true beach people would be like, it's the worst time to go because it had a bunch of seaweed and stuff. But um, it's like for me, just the sand and hearing the ocean like clap is that's all I needed. So I walked along the beach for like ten minutes. The whitest sand, the widest beach, the emptiest beach too. I'm talking like ten something in the morning. It's just empty. Few people here and there, obviously, but the whitest sand is. I found a little uh, piece of like wood on the beach, I, like a uh, kind of. It used to be giant dunes, apparently. So, it just like kind of driftwoody tree trunk thing. Sat on it, meditated. Incredible. Then I walked back over to uh, kind of the entrance, and there were some guys selling coconuts. So I got one and sat at this little uh, this little umbrella chair uh, table thing and just enjoyed a coconut at the beach and it didn't even cost money to like sit there like incredible I couldn't recommend it enough um and then as I handed my coconut I like didn't know where to do there wasn't like trash cans so I went back to the stand different people there's just one guy there that I'd never seen before 
with the most bloody eyes I've ever seen in my entire life. Like this image is just ingrained in my mind because I'd make eye contact and this guy's eyes were just blood. And it was, it was just very interesting. And uh, I was just like, do you... <laughs> he's like, yeah, I take, I take. <laughs> he took the thing and it was just a random moment, but um, can't forget it, obviously. So uh, then I walked back, um, back to the ruins and then back up to my car. Uh, and then I, during the walk, I had texted my Airbnb host, like, uh, do you know a good COVID-19 uh, testing site? Because, uh, or a good COVID site, you know what I mean? Because you need a test to get back into the U.S. And at this point, I'm leaving the next day um, and you need the test like within the day before. So I needed a test that day. She recommends a company. She's like, there's a bunch of them. Boom, boom, boom. So boom, I get back to my car. I'm like, I need a coffee. Uh, so I find a coffee shop that I saw on one YouTube video and I put it into the GPS and I start driving that way. And there's one of the COVID test things that she just talked about right on my right hand, like two minutes into my drive. And it's a drive through version. So <laughs> couldn't have worked out better. I do a drive through COVID test um, and I, uh, I pay for it in pesos. This actually was a, a blessing because I had too many pesos, honestly. Um, uh, if I didn't go souvenir shopping later that night, which I did to just literally spend my pesos, I would have had extra money. Um, that just gives you a sense of the affordability. Like uh, we're talking like $5 for like the equivalent of 15 to $20 meals in the U S. So you're getting a bang for your buck, um, as far as eating and, uh, drinking and stuff like that. Um, and obviously lodging if you stay at Airbnb as opposed to resort. Um, so yeah, Got the, the COVID test, went to the coffee shop. The, resist, the result to the test came in while I was at the coffee shop. Negative. Obviously, I'm here in the States, so um, coffee was decent. Uh, it was made. I got homemade uh, coconut milk, though, so that was nice. Uh, nice little touch for the latte. And then I'm trying to find this little taco cart that I saw, again, in a YouTube video, a uh, vegan taco cart, and super hard to find. Even Happy Cow said the review said is impossible to find. And then on Google Maps, there was a couple reviews and they're like, it's not in the right location. It's tough to find. So I spent about a half hour trying to find the cart and I found it, but it was closed uh, on the side of the road. And then it said, go to our Instagram, uh, which wasn't linked on the Happy Cow or the uh, Google. And I went to the Instagram and it said, uh, currently closed for renovation. So whatever, not a big deal because there was another vegan taco <laughs> another vegan taco street food uh set up like literally two blocks away so i walked over there delicious tacos delicious tacos uh one of the only food things i regret is they had a burrito there and he was like that's our that's our thing we make these homemade uh homemade uh queso with it too and it goes right on top and i just wasn't i don't think i was <laughs> ready for a full burrito with beans and plantains uh at this hour i just wanted some light so i just got a couple tacos but uh I wanted to go back for that burrito later, but they were closed at five when I was hungry again. So it didn't happen, but great. Nonetheless, I head back to the, the Airbnb, hung out for a little bit. You know what I mean? Uh, experienced some of the grounds because it had like uh, had like a little exercise area, a little walking area, just beautiful grounds. Incredible Airbnb. Acacia is the name of the facility. Um, check it out if you're looking for Airbnb in Tulum. Um, then... Uh, I need to spend my pesos, as I said. So I went back downtown and I just started walking the strip and looking for things to buy, essentially. <laughs> I didn't find anything I wanted, but I did find a the vegan taco shop I tried to go to on the first night. It was open. So I went in. And when I tell you this is the best tacos in the entire universe, I am not lying. <laughs> they serve you to talk. So there's mad options. You choose like uh, what you want on the taco as far as like, uh, do you want like a jackfruit thing or do you want al pastor made a jackfruit? Do you want bistec, which is like a, a steak, obviously, but like made out of wheat protein? Do you want this uh, carnita? Do you want which is made out of oyster mushroom and onion? Like so you choose that. So I chose three. I chose bistec, uh, al pastor and carnita. Um, bistec, al pastor y carnita. <laughs> Why am I saying and if I'm saying the rest in Spanish? Yeah. Um. <laughs> So then they come out on the thing. It's like, oh, beautiful. And he's like, do you want the juice? That's a big thing too, agua fresca. Because you can't drink the tap water. Uh, every kind of restaurant makes their own um, little fruit juice. Uh, and it's delicious. Agua fresca. Like different places, different flavors. Like I had hibiscus one. I had uh, interesting fruit ones. They're super good. Anyway, so the taco comes out naked. And then you dress it at the counter. And they had so many stuff. They had a... 
so muy picante, picante, uh, meat, you know what I mean? No picante, etc. So, and the uh, cilantro and onion too. So you could dress it as much as you wanted. And I dressed those things up. Tried the, the hottest stuff they had, which was interesting. It was like a soaked uh, onion in some sort of hot chili or something. That was the hottest thing. It looked like cabbage almost. Um, but it, I mean, it was hot. And then the hottest salsa was like an avocado crema, which was like pff, out of this world. It was absolutely out of this world. Delicious. Not like hot though. Um, I guess the difference is like Asian hot is much different than like uh, at least Tulum tourist facing Mexican hot, I suppose. Because <laughs> um, like Thailand, it was really hot. Like Indian food really can get really hot. But like I tried the hottest food I possibly could and I was completely fine. So that was just a little interesting tidbit. Um, but the tacos, though, <laughs> best tacos I've ever had. I fully dressed them up. And I had to get more. I'm like, I asked, I asked the guy, like, what's, what's the best one? <laughs> and he's like, well, I like this one. It was a, a chorizo made from chickpea. And oh my God, it was so good. He was right. It was the best one by far. <laughs> so I made the mental note and then I looked around. It's also got a, a joined like little vegan store. When I say store, it's like two little, uh, two, like a, a shirt rack and uh, a couple little display tables. And it's, I mean, it's a store. It's, it's incredible. I, I got this t-shirt. <laughs> Los animales son amigos. You know what I mean? Animals are friends. And I got a little vegan wallet uh, made out of vegan leather, obviously. And it was all, he gave me a little discount too. He gave me a uh, hundred peso off. So I did get a, a, uh, I did end up getting souvenir. I spent some peso on souvenir, but he still gave me a discount on the shirt. So I tipped the difference of the discount. Um, why i was expecting to pay more so that was incredible that place is called el bejon vegan tacos in Telum. best best ever el bejon tacos vegano again i'm with the spanglish got a full spanish uh, so i go back to the airbnb and i'm like i still got all this pace so i actually researched what are the best shops to buy stuff at because um the ones i was stopping at just like weren't it it just felt kind of pressured, you know, tourist pressure. So it's a different part of the trip I went to. I went to a couple of these nicer souvenir shop places and got a nice little uh, handmade uh, bowl, you know what I mean? For like wok or whatever I'm going to do with it at home. Salsas, uh, onions, beautiful pottery, you know what I mean? Um, and then I got this beautiful uh, macare, I think it's called. That's like a big thing in Tulum, these uh, woven things hanging off like vines. It's beautiful. Um I got one of those and I got this neck. I just, I went, I went crazy on, uh, on, I spent, literally spent every single last peso I had to a point where that was actually a problem. Cause I'm like, Oh wait, how am I going to pay for dinner? So I found an ATM, uh, and got another thousand peso. And, uh, I went back to the taco spot for dinner and, uh, it was incredible. I got, uh, I got two of the ones he recommended, then one carnita and one pastor. Again, absolutely phenomenal. And then I ordered the same four for takeout because I wanted them later at night too while I'm watching the game. <laughs> and it was so good. And I got back. I was pretty late. So this is the latest I was out. Um, and my drive back to the room was like, I probably shouldn't be out. That was like kind of the vibe I got. Uh, and uh, I got back finally at probably like 8.39. Um, and... It's like it was clearly either you're partying or you uh, if you're a tourist, you're either out partying or you shouldn't be out. That's like the vibe I got or like go to the beach. Like, why are you in the center of town right now at this hour? It's kind of the vibe, I guess. Anyway, I went home. And, uh, you know, I did my thing, ate those tacos, watched the basketball games, uh, started. I packed up and I had uh, enough pesos to get me gas in the morning and then get me to Cancun because I was flying out the next morning. Then I made the worst decision of the entire trip. For some reason, as I'm laying in bed, the game's ended. I'm about to fall asleep. Um, sometimes I like reading Reddit to fall asleep, like uh, NBA uh, stuff, uh, music stuff. You know what I mean? I had map stuff, like traveling stuff. I decided, like, you know what? Let me see. Uh, let me check out if there's a Tulum page. So I go to the Tulum page. This is the worst decision I made. I swear, everybody on that page is like, fear mongering don't go there and it worked on me it really worked on me because there was uh murders recently of like american people building um or whatever there's like a an artist that got murdered that was building a uh like a two or three hundred thousand dollar home and it clearly was like a setup like <laughs> he came with the architects and he got murdered and it just really 
that thread, that little Tulum Reddit really illustrated the income gap. Like there's literally people with nothing, living in nothing. 30 feet from your uh your your new, brand new Tulum $300,000 house, like it it's insane. It's insane. It's insane. So I I was and they were like uh, just talking about don't go there. Everybody's getting robbed. Everybody, and then then it the conversation moved to uh, the police <laughs> extort you on the ride from uh, from uh, what is it from Tulum to Cancun? Like you're gonna get extorted. Uh, I'm not. Po- I'm just reading things. You know what I mean? And uh, more stuff like uh, but I'm just reading like the worst experiences people ever had. It was the <laughs> it was the dumbest thing I did on the whole trip. Was just absorb all of that information. Cause like people are getting people are getting followed home from the club and getting beat up and robbed and all this and uh, people are getting murdered left and right and it's just all this stuff um, and I'm just like damn I shouldn't have took that in so it became very hard to fall asleep and then I eventually fell asleep and woke up to the middle of the night to uh, just like very loud um, conversation happening what felt like right outside of my door um, in in Spanish I didn't really understand anything. And now I'm just like, well, this is it. I had a fun trip. <laughs> now I'm about to get robbed <laughs> because I consumed that information before. The night before, I would have been like, oh, the neighbors have people over. And that's what happened. The neighbors had people over. It was that simple. But I would read all that information, put all that fear into my mind, and I just succ- succumbed to it, succumbed to it, whatever. And I ended up falling right back asleep. But it, I was just uneasy. I woke up the next morning uneasy. Like this drive, I'm about to get pulled over by the police. <laughs> I'm like thinking all the worst stuff ever. Um, of course, that didn't happen. I I got get, I stopped at Starbucks. I got a coffee. Like I lived a fully normal, like touristic fine thing. Like I stopped at Starbucks on the way out of Tulum. I got gas on the way out of Tulum. Um, I even. Uh, specifically wanted to buy the gas with my largest bill so i only had 200 peso left so if a police person came to extort me i could like here this is all i have (laughs) funny thing is on the drive everything's normal obviously there was no issue at all um but in playa del carmen at one of the the one of the stops uh some dude starts cleaning my windshield like i didn't ask obviously and i'm like uh i felt like kind of awkward at first like is this gonna be normal oh this is normal he's just cleaning the windshield um and then he just started to leave and i just rolled down the window and gave him the 200 like but you you were gonna do that for free and he just gave me the the thank you uh, type vibes and uh and then i'm like all right now i have no money so if the police (laughs) pull me over i have nothing to give them so this is good uh so basically get back uh finally make it back to the car rental place park the car and i'm like everything's good but now i'm worried like will the car be returned so my guy isn't there he has one of his uh, co-workers help me, uh, drives me to the airport. Uh, we take a video of the car. He's like, the hold will be returned on your car in like a day. It's It got returned to me yesterday in real time. So I it, fully legit car company. Great, great experience. I get to the airport. I need vegan food. The only place, the only vegan option anywhere is <laughs> handmade guac at Air Margaritaville or Garf- Guy Fieri's. So I chose Air Margaritaville. <laughs> Felt like such a tourist, but it was it was fine. Um, I got on the flight, made it home. You know what I mean? It was absolutely incredible trip. Can't wait to do it again. So many lessons, um, easing or, uh, rolling with the punches. You know, I, I, the very first minute of the trip, I thought, well, shit, I don't have a car. This trip might as well be over. I was some of the, the lowest low I've ever had during travel and some of the highest high I've ever had during travel, especially with that Tulum Ruins tour. It was incredible, that tour. Like, it is incredible. Chichen Itza, just being in the presence of the world wonders. Like, that's incredible high. And then a little before that, I was like, damn, I got scammed. And I let that get me. But it's about, you know, rolling with the punches, staying even, staying balanced. Incredible trip. I cannot wait to go back. I think that's about all I got on. I mean, I obviously could say more, but it'll pop up throughout the pod as much as I can. Um, more happened, obviously, but it was a quick trip. I loved every minute of it. I can't wait to go back. Uh, I loved every minute. In retrospect, I did. Because even the tough minutes were fine. Um, 
And yeah, that, I mean, that's episode 88 of Bobby Keith Podcast. You know, sending all peace, love, and positivity, humans, aliens, and others. I could do a quick, quick little rundown on basketball. Just give it a quick one because I feel as though I'm obligated to. Um, yesterday, two game sevens, Celtics destroying the Chris Middleton list Bucks. I mean, what at a certain point, not having any shooting around Giannis was going to be a problem. It was a problem yesterday. They didn't make any threes. The Celtics made the most threes in any playoff game in NBA history. That means the Celtics were going to win. It was as simple as that. Chris Middleton there, different story. He's not there. Celtics win. Eastern Conference Finals matchup against the Heat. Can't wait for that. Um, and the second game seven, the most shocking game seven of all time, probably. Mavs blow out the Suns, the number one place Suns. The greatest regular season team of this year, Suns, almost 50 piecing them at certain points of the game, absolutely demoralizing and devastating the whole city of Phoenix. Shout out Lucas, shout out the Mavericks, incredible. Um, Warriors took care of business with the Grizzlies. Jaw was deactivated for the season after game three or something, game two or something like that. Um, so that was the shock uh, to me because I wasn't really paying attention fully while on vacation. While in Tulum, it wasn't really vacation. It was more experience, but you get what I'm saying. And the Warriors took care of business. So we got Warriors, Mavericks. That's going to be an incredibly fun matchup. Celtics Heat, we've got like pace uh, over in the West and we've got like bully ball over in the East. There's going to be a fun conference finals. I would love to see Celtics Mavs in the finals. That would be just a dream matchup as far as stylistically. The two of the best defenses, while well, Miami has something to say about that, obviously, but two of the best defenses. Two of the best players. I think the two best, well, Steph has something to say about that, but Luka and Tatum, the two youngest best players <laughs> in the playoffs, you know what I mean, left. Um, and if it's the other way, then we have Warriors Heat, which again is kind of like the old guard. Heat trying to get one, Jimmy trying to get one, Warriors trying to do it again. Um, Bam trying to, you know, get one. I think Bam's a problem for the Mavericks if that ends up being the matchup. Uh, but yeah, this has been a great episode. I love y'all so much. These are my favorite episodes. Travel. Thank you for tuning in. Peace, love, positivity to you. Peace.